Call to order. This is the sixth regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our acting city clerk will read us the quote of the evening. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. Thank you, Linda. Now Alderman Hanna will join us, or lead us. Do we want to do the roll call first? Oh, let's do a little roll call first. Good idea. I didn't mean to usurp that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clean my glasses. Roll call. Warren? Here. Bauk? Here. Powers? Here. Decker? Here. Isha? Here. Hammond? Here. Hanna? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kath? Here. Kittleson? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Versi? Here. Longerman? Here. Okay. Full House, we have a quorum. Now, if Alderman Hanna may lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mark. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there's one from uh, Alderman Bowers advising that he's uh, <coughs> resigning from the Senior Activity Center Commission. To move to accept. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Attorney McLean. And a letter from uh, Glenn Pilling <coughs> advising that he's tendering his resignation from the Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority effective immediately. Motion to accept. Second. Jeez. Motion and a second under discussion. <coughs> no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. But all for resignations? Uh, mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, Ron Rinfleisch to replace John Hill as a representative from the Sheboygan Area School District whose term expires on 4-25-2011. Jeff Goins to replace Thomas Grittinger, the representative from the UW Sheboygan whose term expires on 4-25-2011. And Laura Gum to replace Pat Hartley, representative from Utility Company, whose term expires on 4-25-2011, signed by the mayor. Motion to accept. Second. We have a motion, and it, actually that uh, lies over. Oh, thanks. This lies over till the next meeting. <laughs> Public forum. Mayor, mayor, excuse me. We missed a resignation, Mr. Hires. I have a meeting with Mr. Hires over that. I'm going oh, to not okay. announce that until All right. the Thank you. next uh, council meeting. Thank you. Hold. First one on public forum is Michael Lubbert. Would you please come forward? <coughs> Michael, could I have your address, please? Uh, 721 Summer Drive. You will have five minutes. All right. Dear Mayor and Council, my name again is Mike Lubert. I am a firefighter for the city of Sheboygan, as well as a taxpaying citizen of the far south side. The closure of fire station number five has made my home and my neighbors' homes more dangerous <coughs> places to live. Before you today is a document that is in dire need of passing. The Sheboygan Fire Department has recently closed the station and it will continue to be closed, as will others, on a roll-in brownout basis until the fire department is adequately staffed. This is a terrible, unsafe situation that puts the public needlessly in harm's way. You have a concession offer from the fire union to support the replacement of four of the eight firefighters lost through attrition in the last year. By accepting this concession, the citizens of Sheboygan can once again be protected to the same level that they deserve and we know is necessary. Over 1,000 residents signed a petition to ask you to restore their Southside firehouse. The signers of this petition may or may not want a tax increase, but what they most certainly do not want cut is the level of fire protection in this city. However, funding is in place for these firefighters for the next two years. These firefighters will also help to reduce the city's burden on overtime and help to increase the revenue from the ambulance. Yet another reason that the tax rates have not increased in five years. 
Despite technology, little has changed in the last 50 years on what it takes to put out a fire, perform CPR, contain a hazmat spill, rescue a person from entrapment in a vehicle, or pull a person from the lake. It takes boots on the ground. This is a labor-intensive occupation, and the adage to do more with less is just not applicable to the fire service. We need a minimum amount of personnel to effectively and safely ensure the safety of our public. We are not superheroes. We are average, ordinary citizens who happily take on the risks associated with our profession, but we also know what it takes to be effective. Much should be said about the fire department's accomplishments in this last year, but all that will not be possible next year. We are a department held together with overtime. The temporary solutions will unravel, and unless fully staffed, a preventable death will occur. This is a burden we do not take lightly. We know what the outcome will be, and long after you aldermen are gone, we will still be here to pick up the pieces of a devastating and needless tragedy. We urge you to maintain our staff and for safety's sake. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Next. Val Schulz. <clears throat> address, Mayor. please, Val. Pardon? Your address, please. 1747 Greenfield Avenue, Sheboygan. Thank you. You will have five minutes. You all have a copy of my communication to you. I will read it for the benefit of the viewing public and those present here. Construction of the fire station on 18th Street and Marbury Road was discussed before the ambulance service was transferred to the fire department. I oppose the construction of this fire station and still do not support the need for it. Mark Zier was fire chief at the time. There was discussion at a public protection and safety committee meeting which Mark spoke and I also spoke. After hearing Mark comments supporting construction, I asked, do you build fire stations to improve medical response times? His answer, yes, you do. He was at that time already contemplating taking over the ambulance service, and that was a deciding factor justifying the need for this fire station. It is my opinion that fire protection was secondary to medical response times. The distance between the station at 18th and Mead and 18th and Marbury Road is exactly two miles. In these tight budget times, can the city of Sheboygan support fire stations every two miles? Rotating closing of, a, of fire stations is a solution any grade school student could arrive at. Why can't the fire chief do a study of calls received by individual stations, population served, and types of structures in the area? Then base his decision on the result of that information and close one station. People do not want a property tax increase, but still do not want to give up anything. Here's an expense that can be eliminated no, with no real adverse effect on anyone but the council does not have the political strength to say, do it. Public works has been decimated with loss of jobs and employees. With the loss of these jobs and employees, our fine city will continue to deteriorate with poor streets, parks, and dead trees. This will manifest itself eventually with buildings and home maintenance. You will see even more major crime. Council, Mayor, and Department Heads, do your homework, <coughs> do the research, and make the difficult decisions, but let's not let our, seri our city deteriorate in the process. One mistake I made in this communication is the actual distance from driveway to driveway is 1.6 miles, not two miles. Travel time going the speed limit is four minutes and 25 seconds straight down the road, stopping for two stop signs, with no corners to turn. I'm sure the fire trucks make it in much less time than that. This station was not built to support the industrial park. It was sized and designed to blend in and serve only the residential area. I have not seen the petitions that were circulated, so do not, not know how the question was asked, but it should have read, do you support paying higher property taxes to maintain five fire stations? At the time of construction, there was opposition from area residents to building this station. They felt it should remain as green space. <clears throat> because of the cost of fire vehicles, a number of years ago, an enterprise fund was created as a fire department vehicle replacement fund to operate similarly to the Public Works Motor Vehicle Fund. Unfortunately, you have not been putting money into this fund for several years, 
Consequently, the most recent vehicle was leased rather than purchased. If you are not going to support this fund and cannot purchase vehicles, this is more justification to consolidate stations. <coughs> rather than fund five fire stations, I suggest you invest in the Public Works Department. They put the face on your community, which is so important to maintaining an attractive city, encouraging visitors and others to relocate here and current residents to remain here. Rotating the closing of all fire stations for a period of time makes absolutely no sense. This would leave huge gaps between some stations and some house more apparatus and vehicles than others do. I ask that you and the mayor work with the fire department to let the station at 18th and Marbury Road remain closed until volume of calls justifying reopening it and adequate funding is available and do not rotate closing up other fire stations. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Next. Mark Sawyer. <clears throat> Your address, please, Mark. Mark Zier, Surring, Wisconsin, and I thank the mayor and the common council for this time to speak. I um, had mixed emotions about coming here and speaking now that I have moved away for a year and a half, but I did spend 57 of my years here in the city of Sheboygan, 35 of them owning a home and paying taxes. I was fire chief for five, my last five years and spent 29 years before that on, on the rigs responding to calls. I felt compelled to come here for many reasons because I still have relatives and friends living in this city, and I do plan to come back here someday, maybe when my health starts to fail me. I want to be back in a city where there's good hospitals and, and, and an ambulance system. I feel compelled to come because one of my friends, Val Schultz, who we, uh, can, is a gentleman and we can agree to disagree, um, I made comments in the paper about my statements. And the statements are very true. I did build that station to improve medical response time. I didn't build it for the ambulance. If you recall, I tried to get the ambulance way before the fire station was ever built. We failed in getting the ambulance in my days because I believed in it. Responding to calls in this city for over 30 years, almost 30 years, I saw the need for a fire department-based ambulance system. And now we're looking at times and limits. The south side residents, who have friends and relatives live on the far south side, are sitting, like Val Sol said, um, uh, uh, they're, they're only one, MapQuest says it's 1.8 miles uh, to, uh, from station two to the new one. But then there are people in Gray Fox, like former uh, uh, pers uh, employee Tom Holton, who lived in Gray Fox, which is a mile further. If you take a look at all the stations right now, NFPA standards said fire stations should be about a mile and a half apart. Uh, station 1 to 3 is 2.1 miles. Station 1 to 4 is 2.1 miles. Station 3 to 4 is 1.75 miles. Station 1 to 2 is 2.4 miles. And a new station is 1.8 from station 2. But if you add on the length that it would take for that station to get to the farthest side, it's 4.2 miles. And you're talking about an 8 to 10 minute response time. Uh, you know, this council is looking at changing, but a previous council spent a lot of time, Alderman Manny, Alderman Meyer, Alderman Radke, spent a lot of time, uh, Montemeyer, spent a lot of time and effort looking into why that was needed to be built. Those people on that side of town are paying taxes to be saved. I hear that says, well, what is two firefighters going to do in that station? Let me tell you, if I lived in that side of town, I would want two firefighters to come and defibrillate me in the first four or five minutes of my life, or I'm not going to be surviving. Okay, if you want to have that station too, out of service, there's one station. Prior to that station being built, the daily roster when I was chief, there was five people south of City Hall and 14 north of City Hall and three fire stations. At least now it's eight and 11. The south side is being treated fairly. The residents of the south side have a chance. If that station goes to a car fire right now, there's nobody to respond to the entire south side except for this station to travel all the way to the far south side. <clears throat> Closing that station is not the right thing to do. One council changing another council on this quick notice is not the thing to do right now. Defibrillation of an individual decreases the life once 10% every minute. It takes a minute for dispatch to get the call. It takes the firefighters time to get onto the trucks, their gear on. In winter, they got to put their clothes on to travel. It isn't only looking at a small amount of time of how long it takes 30 miles an hour to go from station to station. There is a combined time that has to be met for responses. And now the fire department can do it with that station. Uh, the comment with only two firefighters, they can do CPR. They can pull you out of a window. They can get into a fire before it's a house fire. They can perform CPR. It's about services. Who has to pay for services? When do you want to have good services? Um, 
the service, no doubt, has been enhanced since the fire department got it. I'm not saying nothing about Orange Cross. They did their job. But they were new paramedics all the time. Now we're going to have tenured employees. People are going to spend 15 to 30 years on that ambulance. When they go off the ambulance, they're still going to be in an engine. They train together. They go to extrication together. When I used to go, we couldn't get Orange Cross people <coughs> in, the, in, in, in the cars, paramedics in the cars, because they didn't have the gear to get in. They weren't trained to get into cars. It's a full service right now that the city has that many cities have had for years. Milwaukee, Green Bay, Manitowoc, Oshkosh, Fond du Lac. If you look on TV, when you see TV on, on CNN, who is responding to the Memphis floods? Who is responding to Spokane, Washington? It's firefighters who have dedicated their lives, as I did. And I almost lost my life three times when I was a firefighter. And I don't mean close, they hauled me away a trap three times. Firefighters are dedicated individuals to do the job. They want to do the job. They've offered concessions to give you more time to spend on this issue. Uh, you know, there's been an attack on unionism and on public employees. All public employees are taking a hit right now. They do a great job in this issue when trying to do more with less. But we're a service-oriented deal. Every firefighter, paid full-time firefighter in the state of Wisconsin is a union member. And every union member goes through the ranks, it becomes captains, lieutenants, some of us become chiefs. Why did Jeff Herman get to be chief? He was a good selection by the city, excellent selection. He came through the ranks, he lived here, he loved this city, he represents the people of this city, and he was dedicated. He was union president as I was never union president. I was a state president of the union. I gave up that job to take over this job. I took a $50,000 cut in pay to be the chief of the Sheboygan Fire Department because I cared about this city me, and where Mark, it was going. Would you like your extra minute? Oh, you bet I do. I I'll talk fast. So. Second. <laughs> uh, uh, go, so, go, go ahead, Chief. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And so what we're looking at is trying to buy some time on the ambulance and the, and the station. Revenue sources. There's no more shared revenues. Where is your revenues coming from? I sat in public protection and safety meetings where you're trying to get more, two more dollars for a license fee. Uh, 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 fees, I'll raise them. Get, we need a municipal court to get fees in. Here is the biggest generator of revenue that you have now that somebody else had and would love to have back. It's the biggest revenue of generator that you have and you think about getting rid of it. <coughs> and yet down the line you're going to need it. And if you look at the numbers that Mr. Hansen gave you, did anybody look at what the deficit's going to be in the police department, the DPW, or any other division down five years from now, what their deficit's going to be? If you don't raise taxes, there's no more shared revenue, it's going to be worse than the fire department. You've got a golden goal right now, and we are there doing the job and getting nothing. I asked Orange Cross for 50 bucks a call when they had the ambulance so I could offset my costs, and they laughed at me. No. We were spending three firefighters to the call, a fire truck, and we got nothing for it. Mark, nope. your six minutes are up. Thank you very much. I urge you to support ambulance and fire station. Thank you. Thank you. Next in public forum. Jack Wirtz. I bet we have a volunteer fire department. I live at 47 Winnebago Place, Sheboygan. You'll have five minutes, Jack. Good evening, Mayor Ryan and members of the Common Council. I am sure all of you are aware of my stand on the ambulance service. It should be placed back in the private sector, using the personnel to do the job of firefighting and the rest of the duties that Chief Herman has pointed out that they perform. The alleged loss of income would be balanced by no longer having the overhead of wages, benefits, insurance, lease, upkeep, and various other costs. In that way, the department could function at a level needed to provide the protection our citizens need and deserve. The needs of the ambulance service could again be provided by the private sector, which has done this adequately in the past, and citizen safety would not be in jeopardy. After listening to the dilemma of the, other, of the various other departments presented at the last committee of the whole meeting, my concerns for everyday duties of the DPW have grown with leaps and bounds. I think you should seriously investigate privatizing of the garbage collection and return those men to the other duties that the DPW and ease some of the burden caused by the loss of 25 workers over the past periods of times. The thought of deteriorating parts and snow not being plowed constitute hazards to our citizens too. 
You are not faced with an easy task, as you are all well aware of. Efforts by you should be made to spread the burden of the dwindling funds evenly over the entire scope of city operations. Do not break the hiring freeze for the fire department and cause greater hardships in other departments, such as four more people having to go from the Department of Public Works, which according to Mr. Bittner, is a distinct possibility. The mission statement of the, De Public, uh, of the Department of Public Works is to improve the quality of life by effectively developing, maintaining, and improving the infrastructure, natural resources, and community service. Assist them in fulfilling this mission. Do not hinder them. Look to the future as to what your actions can mean in the long run, which are ever-growing costs in the years to come. These new hires will have to be funded over and over and over, year after year after year. Luck to you with the tasks you must tackle. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jack. Next. <clears throat> Chase Longmiller. Address, please, Chase. 2611 Rolling Meadows Drive. What was that, 2611? 2611 Rolling Meadows. Thank you. <coughs> You'll have five minutes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Deputy Clerk Long, Attorney McLean, and members of the Common Council, thank you for this opportunity tonight. It's very rare I get the last word. Recently, petitions with over 1,000 signatures were presented to the council asking you to staff all five fire stations and hire four firefighters. A few days ago, I was informed of another 250 signatures that have been collected in just one day. After talking to some of those who collected these signatures, I learned that many of our citizens were unaware that you had closed one of their stations. They were adamant about signing the petition in order to send you the message that they want their fire stations opened and staffed. I ask you, will you listen to these constituents with the same enthusiasm you offer to our detractors? Local 43, in addition to the good faith offer made during the last contract negotiations, has made an additional unsolicited, unsolicited concession offer. We recognize that the city is under no obligation to accept this offer. Even though the city and the union came to a mutual agreement just a few months ago, we believe it is in the best interest of everyone involved to accept this offer so that the city can move forward. Our concession will provide 18 months of staffing for five stations. It offers financial relief for 2011 and it buys time in order to determine a long-term course of action for the city. Some, council, some members of council are hesitant to hire any necessary staff based on problems they believe exist within the Wisconsin retirement system. This is a complex issue that requires open-minded discussion on behalf of everyone involved. As we have proven in the past, Local 43 is prepared to discuss this and all issues in totality as part of the negotiation process. This concession we offer is not a final solution. It can, however, make a difference in the lives of the people we protect. It allows the city to provide appropriate staffing levels so that we may continue to protect everyone we serve. We need appropriate staffing to arrive at the scene of a fire within minutes if we are going to have any chance of rescuing trapped citizens. We need appropriate staffing to keep a fire confined to one bedroom as opposed to burning down an entire home. We need appropriate staffing to help evacuate an apartment building and to confine the fire and smoke damage to a few apartments as opposed to destroying an entire complex. We need appropriate staffing in order to keep a fire that is rushing through one business from spreading to nearby businesses. Having enough people is what allows us to do what we took an oath to do, protect the lives and property of the citizens of Sheboygan. An effective, proactive, and professional fire department is a vital partner in the fight to keep Sheboygan economically viable, in the fight to attract and retain business and industry, and to help, help, and to help it remain one of the best places in America to live. Over 1,000 people have told you that they want you to keep their fire stations open and to hire the four firefighters. I hope that you are listening to them. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. Is that all for public forum? Okay, moving on, uh, under Mayor's announcements, I will be brief this evening. Uh, first of all, uh, courtesy of uh, Vice President Kittleson, 
Uh, the Wisconsin Dental Association Foundation is doing a mission of mercy. And she's put bullet points on here so I can actually read it. It says, through the efforts of many, including Dr. Mark Huberty, a local Sheboygan dentist, this was put together by, um, and uh, what we would like to welcome to our city this weekend, the Wisconsin Dental Association Foundation Mission of Mercy. The project will take place at North High School. Uh, if you're wondering, this is uh, on Thursday, uh, set up is on Ju Thursday, June 24th. Then two days of free dental treatment will begin starting Friday, June 25th, and then again on June 26th on both days from 6 o'clock a.m. till 5 o'clock p.m. So uh, the Wisconsin Dental Association is committed to making a difference by improving the oral health of Wisconsin residents through support of projects such as these that provide dental care for the disadvantaged. Uh, more than 930 volunteers have signed up to help this year in Sheboygan. So if uh, we, you know of any citizens that uh, are in need uh, of dental care uh, that cannot afford it, uh, please let them know about this. Again, this will be um, on June 24th is set up, and then um, on the 25th and 26th, which is Friday and Saturday from 6 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. at North High School, and thank you, Jean. Mayor, may I, may I say one thing? Certainly. Thank you. Um, Alderman, I put a, a, a slip on each of your desks, um, and uh, they would love to have any of us or all of us there uh, seeing what's going on there. So uh, if you read that, uh, read that brochure over, and, and uh, you can call or email them, and uh, you can find out further what's going on there this, and that, this coming weekend at North High School. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> When I was having my teeth done about a week ago, my uh, dental hygienist, uh, Tara from Dr. Kellner's office, told me that she was going to participate. And their goal this weekend is to do a million dollars in free dental care mm -hmm. here in Sheboygan. Right. And there is a tremendous, as Tara was working on my teeth, she told me of the uh, tremendous need in the community uh, of people who uh, can't afford to have their, their, their teeth taken care of. So very worthwhile project. So if you, uh, as you mentioned, if you know of anybody who needs dental care, uh, it's available this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Moving on to announcements. Uh, Fourth of July, I'd like to go over this again, our schedule. I believe that uh, all citizens should participate in our Fourth of July celebrations. Uh, Wednesday, June 30th, again, is the Sheboygan Pops concert at 7 o'clock p.m. at Fountain Park. Uh, Thursday, uh, July 1st, uh, is the uh, Sheboygan County's best band finale. Um, it says live outdoors here. I don't know exactly where, but I imagine that's probably on the... I think it's at the Arts Center. It's at the Arts Center. Thank you, President Kisha. At least it was two years ago when my son won the best band competition. <laughs> <laughs> and now where is he? Uh, that's another story. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Friday, July 2nd, uh, Twilight Concert Series will be at 6.30 p.m. at uh, Fountain Park, Jerry Schneider Band. Uh, Venetian Boat Parade will be, uh, begins after dark, obviously. Venetian boats are lit up boats coming up and down the river. Uh, Sheboygan River, obviously. Um, live music uh, from uh, The Buzz uh, will be at Dillon Park. Buffalo Joe will be playing on Friday evening from 7 to 11. So that's down at uh, Dillon or Dillon or whatever you want to call it, Park. Everybody pronounces it differently, kind of like Racine, I guess. Okay, Saturday, July 3rd is actually, uh, we're calling the... Uh, Fourth of July this year is Saturday, July 3rd, uh, which is uh, Saturday. We've decided to set everything up for the, the Independence Day celebration. Uh, there's a Freedom Run 2010 beginning at the uh, lakefront at 7 o'clock a.m. The parade will be held at 9 o'clock a.m., usual route uh, up uh, north on 7th Street to Michigan Avenue and down to Broughton Drive. Uh, as has been done in years past. The Art Armada, I think uh, formerly known as the, uh, as the Cardboard Boat Regatta, uh, will be at, uh, at the river following the parade. I believe that uh, begins at noon. Um, Sheboygan Theater Company will have We the People at uh, Fountain Park at 4 o'clock p.m. So that is a, uh, that is a free show. Uh, free live music and children activities will be all day long at uh, Dillon Park. Um, also, uh, at, uh, from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. will be the Groove Hogs, 4 o'clock to 6.30 Bay City Swing, and uh, 7 to 11, as Alderman Buck says, the Screamin' Cucumbers, and there's no G on Screamin'. 
So um, after that, of course, we will have the fireworks courtesy of our friends at Johnsonville and the Steyer family. And that will begin approximately at 9.30 or when it's dark enough to have the fireworks. So I hope everybody participates in our, uh, the independence of our country uh, on the 3rd of July this year. That's all I have for Mayor's announcements. We have a public hearing. A uh, hearing is for the proposed water lateral replacement project on Maryland Avenue from South 13th Street to South 14th Street. Public hearing. Um, is there anybody that would like to be heard? I believe, do we need a motion to open the hearing? Move to open the hearing, Mr. Mayor. Second. Okay, is there anybody that would like to be heard? And for the third time, is there anybody that would like to be heard for the proposed water lateral replacement project on Maryland Avenue from <coughs> South 13th to South 14th? Going three times. Motion to close the hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearings are closed. Consent agenda, President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I just would request a roll call vote on 618. 618? Yeah, I have to abstain. Okay, we have a motion to take a separate vote on 618. So right now we will be going uh, 61 through 617, 619 through 636. Alderman Bowers, do you have, did you have a comment on the yeah, consent also agenda? Yeah, on 618. I was going to ask how much uh, funds were, ta were uh, talking about here. Okay, first of all, I'd, I'd like to cover the, uh, the motion on 61 through 617 uh, and 619 through 636. Uh, under discussion on those items? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Bowers? Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, regarding 618, Alderman Bowers, you had a question? Yes. Um, how much money is involved in this fund and uh, are they asking for the entire amount? Okay, um, from one, my knowledge of the bid, uh, the bid assessment is set by the members of the bid. Uh, the Business Improvement, Improvement District uh, downtown, I believe, uh, I don't know the exact number. The city only works as a collecting agent for the bid. The bid sets the assessments, the assessments come out of their members uh, the city acts to collect those revenues, and those revenues are dispersed back to the bid authority, which supports their <coughs> members. Um, does anybody have that exact amount? I know their budget for the year is a little over $100,000. I don't know if there is one or two payments on that. Alderman Bowers? At one time, the city was uh, contributing $17,000, so I don't know if that's been changed that or not. President Kisha. Your Honor, uh, that is a separate issue from this. This is bid collected dollars, as you described, that we don't own. We're the conduit for those funds to <coughs> them based on statute. The city does, or has, um, via the budget, contribute roughly $17,000, Hellman Bowers, to the bid um, through tourism fund. I believe that money comes through the tourism. Yes, it does. Uh, and that's done on an annual basis with the budget. That answer your question, Alderman Bowers, sir? Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, may I ask a question of the city attorney? Certainly. Uh, no? <laughs> yes, yes, please, please do. Unless. Uh, just a question. You know, there are several of us in town uh, here. We, we own companies that belong to the bid. Uh, should we recuse ourselves from voting on this item? Uh, I don't think so. If this is money that the council has already approved in the budget and you approved the, uh, the bids operating plan, so it's not like it's new money, it's just money that the, has been collected on behalf of the bid that you're just releasing, so Thank I don't you. think it's necessary. Is there any other discussion? If there is none, uh, roll call on 618, please. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. 
Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Anna? Abstain. Heidemann? Aye. Path? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Abstain. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Falk? Aye. Twelve ayes, three abstains, and one no. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 637 through 642 to be referred. Uh, reports of officers 26-43 um, will be held for 6-52, so we will go back to 643. Um, reports of officers 2-644 through 49 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three, 6-50 by Alder Persons, Gisha, Wangaman, and Koth authorizing the finance auditor slash analyst to negotiate settlement of insurance claims not to exceed $2,500 without prior, uh, prior approval from the Risk Management Committee of the Common Council. President Gisha. If Alder Person Kath, uh, president of that committee, uh, or chairman of that committee could comment. Very good, Alder Person Kath. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, the reason why we are changing a few things here is basically to speed up the process. And um, presently, we do not have a director of human resources. OK. Is there any other discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 6 51 by Alder Persons. Kittleson, Gisha, Vanderweel, and Versi lifting, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire an employee benefits administrator in the HR department. Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would, um, I, do we need to suspend the rules on this? No, we document? do not. We do not. Okay. Then I'd make a motion to, uh, or I'd ask for a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Well, according Second. to, uh, according to, to the notes here, yes, we do we need do. to suspend okay. the rules. So I, I'm sorry. Can... Yeah. Okay. Then I'd ask for a suspension of the rules on this document. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules okay. under discussion on suspension. Under discussion on suspension, we'd like to get this process moving along. They're, in, uh, they're very busy in the HR department. Um, they need this reorganization to, uh, to get moving along. Okay, under discussion on the suspension only. Does anybody have any questions on the suspension? Alderman Bowers, no? Alderman Rinfleisch? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I understand that they're very busy and would like to continue to, to move the process along. Um, I've gone along with suspensions for uh, drop dead dates, contracts, or you know, the first shovel full of dirt needs to be moved. Um, uh, and I'm not necessarily willing to uh, go along with suspension unless there is a, a date that, that, that needs to happen. Yeah, I guess I'm asking why I can't wait two weeks and follow the normal process. Can, could we refer to uh, uh, Tom Rice from the HR department? Can he come up and explain? Uh, under Tom, can you come up and uh, explain? We need a motion to open the floor. Motion to open second. the floor. Motion to second to open the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> floor is open. Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, what you have before you is a reorganization of the Human Resources Department based upon the needs that I see going forward. Uh, you may recall that uh, when I was asked to continue on, one of my key objectives was to take a look at the Human Resources Department and to see what we could do to make it more effective to meet the needs of the employees. Uh, you're talking about now just suspending the rules so we can get this passed. Uh, we have a couple of meetings coming up within the next two days that I would like the people, uh, all of the people in the Human Resources <coughs> Department involved in. 
Uh, it, it's important that if this position is going to be filled, uh, we need to uh, get these people on board so they can participate in the meetings. One of them has to do with a uh, uh, information system for human resources, which could lead to uh, an automated payroll system for uh, the city. Uh, all of that has to do with the technology improvements that we want to make that are going to better assist our employees and meet their needs more effectively and more quickly. That's the urgency behind it. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, next we have uh, Alderman Boren. Uh, thank you. I had a couple of questions for Mr. Rice. No getting away yet. First of all, first of all, on the housekeeping matter here, on this position, I notice if we looked at document 667, which is supposed to lie over tonight unless somebody sus suspend the rules, uh, one of the people that's listed on that is an ad of an employee benefits administrator. Is that, is that the same position, Mr. Rice? Yes. Well, then I don't know how we can pass 651 tonight if, it's gonna, if the position is gonna lie over till the next meeting, uh, unless we're gonna suspend the rules. Uh, my other question, well, maybe somebody can answer that. Can we, can we approve 651 tonight when 667 is gonna lie over for adding the position? Attorney McLean? I don't think they're theoretically inconsistent that one is saying you're lifting a hiring freeze in order to hire an employee benefits administrator in the human resources department. Uh, you could do that, although I must say uh, I agree with you, uh, Alderman Bourne, that if, if uh, you don't have a benefits administrator in the human resources department until uh, two weeks out, you're not going to be able to hire anybody. So we won't be able to hire the person because the other document's going to lie over. We can approve the lifting the hiring freeze, but we can't hire the person for two weeks until this document comes back. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you suspended the rules on the other one, too, and uh, authorized okay. hiring or, okay. or authorized uh, changing the table of organization to put that person into the Human Resources Department and you uh, pass this hiring freeze, then you could do that. Uh, the uh, department could do that tomorrow, but uh, without changing the table of organization, you wouldn't be able to uh, fill the position even if you lift the hiring freeze tonight. And then my question for you, Mr. Rice, is uh, uh, for the, I'm looking at the job description on document number 667, having to do with that employee, the employee's benefits administrator, and I'm looking at the education and experience. Uh, I would imagine you and this, Salary and Grievance Committee feel comfortable hiring a person with a high school diploma or GED? Is that oh, common practice? I order, Your Honor, the discussion currently is right. just on This the, is on suspension of the rules. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I can get back to it then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Alderman Boren. Uh, next, uh, we have Alderman <coughs> Rinfleisch. Um, thank you. Actually, Alderman Boren asked my question regarding 60. Thank you. Next, we have Alderman Bauk. Nope, my question's been answered. Thanks, Mr. And Alderman Bowers uh, on suspension of the rules. Well, this is in regards to the amount budget. Uh, no, that would be uh, after the discussion of the suspension of the rules, please. Okay. okay, on suspension of the rules, I think we will do a roll call vote. Okay. Yesha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? No. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? No. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. <clears throat> okay, motion carries, rules are sus Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Motion carries, rules are suspended. Now we have Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Then I would make a motion that we put the resolution <laughs> upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, you can see that we didn't have we have the Fife form attached to it. It was put on your desks uh, here this evening. So I believe all the information is there that you need um, to uh, to uh, take care of this reorganization in the HR department. Thank you, Vice President Kittleson. Thank you. Next, we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is it appropriate now, uh, Attorney McLean, to ask my question on that job description? 
on document uh, number 667. I'm not sure what your question is, but uh, I guess my comment's the same, that uh, uh, you, you can logically lift the hiring freeze to, uh, to hire a position, uh, but you're not going to be able to actually hire the position until the position is created. Right. Okay, that's, that's not my, my question had to do with the educational credentials. Uh, Mr. Rice, uh, did you in the uh, Salary and Grievance Committee, and is it common practice in the private sector for a position of this uh, responsibility to be uh, filled by somebody with a high school diploma, or would this be a, more of a bachelor's degree type position? Thank you. Uh, in conversation with uh, Charles Carlson, who is our consultant for compensation and working on the non-rep pay plan, we discussed this position at length. And due to the function that it's going to serve within the city, uh, he felt that a college degree was not required, but that a high school education plus experience or an associate degree with experience would be more called for. Is this, uh, if I could just follow up Certainly. There. Uh, is this a person, uh, the person that's in, going to move into this position, is that a position that's temporarily in the office that's going to move into that position? This position would be posted, it would be posted. within the city. All right. And anyone who meets the qualifications would be considered for it, and we'd take the most qualified person. All right, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Next we have Alderman Bauck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, it looks like both of those will be around a 5E or a 5C. What do they make an hour, Tom? That's the one thing I didn't bring with me was that pay scale. Okay, that's kind of an important number. Um, we had budgeted somewhere in the neighborhood of about 31000 for this position for six months. So it's approximately about $20 an hour, $22 an hour. So $62,000 a year for wages and benefits? Uh, that's, yes. $62,000 a year for wages and benefits for a high school graduate who's going to be administering the confidential matters of the employees of the city of Sheboygan. Um, if I can get some clarification first, Nancy, would you happen to know on ex exactly what those pay grades equate to? No. I'm a, I'm, that even surprises me. I didn't see that coming. I, I just can't imagine anyone in this chamber who would vote yes on either of these measures, $62,000 a year for someone who doesn't have a college education is going to be administering, going to be administering. There are comparables for this. This isn't even, this isn't even funny. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Yes. I guess that kind of clarifies it. I, I was looking at the 243 and 212, and I thought that was the annual salary. Now he brings out it's 62,000. That includes benefits? Yes. So 62000 with the retirement, the health, and everything. That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money for someone with a high school education. If I'm not, if I'm, oh, I'm uh, sorry. You know, when you, when you take out the benefits package, we're talking about, for, about high 30s to $40,000 That's year. correct. Mm -hmm. Let me make you aware of the fact that we have DPW employees who make more than $62,000 a year who don't have any more than a high school education. Yeah, but that's right. And Mr. Mayor, I don't know if I'm... Uh, I've been pumped in for Alderman a Alderman Bauck, you are, you are still on. Uh, thank you. And, and, and so this person won't protect a child in a burning house. They won't stand between us and a bad guy with a gun. They won't fill a pothole and they won't mow a lawn. They won't mow a park and beautify our city. No, if this person is going to answer all of the questions that our employees have regarding why their insurance claim wasn't paid or how to file a claim properly. This person is going to be working with our insurance carrier to design the insurance program going forward for 2012, 13, 14, and 15. This person is going to answer any other questions that people may have, including the council regarding our benefit program, and going to be thoroughly versed in that. We're talking about someone, Mr. Bauck, who has a background or will have a strong understanding of all of our benefit programs and be able to answer questions for all of our employees. I, in these economic times, I can't see voting to approve a $45,000 entry, uh, 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 
high school educated secretary when that's not what the market in this area would bear. Uh, and so I'm going to vote no and I urge the council to that that $62,000 could fund most of a firefighter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. We'll get off that one for a moment. Um, Point number two on the strategic goal says to consolidate traditional HR department functions and relieve finance department. Of, how much overlap is there now? And if you guys have looked at this, what kind of you know, cost savings is going to be gained by getting some of this stuff out of finance or at least efficiencies uh, getting out of finance and over to this employee? If benefit? you take a look at the organization change we're proposing, we're moving, we're proposing moving the payroll coordinator out of the finance function into the human resource department that person's job duties would be everything that she currently does and expanded to include, uh, for example, the compensation work that that person would be doing now on the non-rep pay plan to keeping that current. Um, it's my understanding that uh, it's going to greatly relieve a part of the, uh, the workload for the uh, accounting department, especially for Nancy Buss, who does a lot of that payroll work herself now, and give her the time and the opportunity to devote her time to uh, the budget and other things going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. President Kisha. Thank you. I just wanted to comment on the payroll administrator shove over from finance to, uh, uh, to human resources. That's been contemplated, it's my understanding, for some time. It's, it's in full support of the finance department. Uh, our payroll system, and I'm surprised they don't you know, pay out in pigs and chickens. It's, it's really old. Uh, time cards are actually used by employees which are checked and double checked and triple checked by people throughout the building don't have anything to do with the HR or it doesn't have any, anything to do with finance. One of the main goals of the reorganization uh, in general is to automate our payroll system so that we have biometrics so we can track um, time on task. So if somebody says what does it cost to do X, Y, or Z, we can do that. And uh, by making that move, the finance department is in full support of making that move from the finance department to HR. So unfortunately, sometimes when you've got to make changes, you, when you make changes, there's money up front to make those changes. And I'm not speaking to the, the, uh, the payroll costs of the uh, employee benefits administrator. I'm saying you're going to have to buy systems. You're going to have to evaluate a payroll system to find out what's right. And in the long term, that will save you money. But there are upfront costs in doing that long term. So um, I'm hoping this will move. Uh, the HR department into the maybe the 19th century. I'll settle for that. When I when I came here, I walked into the human resource department office, and there was a typer, typewriter on the desk. The secretary. I haven't seen a typewriter in a business office in 25 years, and that gives you some idea of where we're going. Uh, most of the work on the payroll system is done paper and pencil, manually entering time cards every payroll period. Uh, I don't think you have any idea of how far we need to come to bring up the efficiency levels in this city. And that's the purpose of the reorganization. These two positions are critical to us moving forward and automating some of the systems. Munis was purchased years ago. We don't know whether that's a system that can work. We're certainly willing to give it a chance. But I'm committed to putting in an HRIS system and hopefully as a result of that also a payroll system. Without these, without these positions, I can't do that. Uh, if I may have some input here. The, the first day that I, I spent in the mayor's office, I, I looked on my desk and there were, there, there were these little index cards. And I said, what's this? And somebody told me, being Mary Rager, my secretary, she said, that's payroll. I said, you gotta be kidding me. I hadn't seen anything like that in, in uh, um, many years of operating a small company myself, a much smaller company than the size of this city. Um, so what, uh, what uh, Tom Rice is saying is true. I mean, we are eons behind when it comes to technology, especially in our payroll department. I don't think there is uh, prob probably an entity of this size uh, in the country that doesn't have an automated payroll system. And if it takes moving somebody from one position to another, and even though it may be a high school education, um, I believe this person will bring with them experience um, that may uh, outweigh um, a degree that they may have in one thing or another. Uh, so you can say an entry-level position, but I don't believe it's a truly an entry-level position. An entry-level position is somebody you pull off the street and you say, here, I'm going to teach you how to do a job. Um, 
Is this an entry level position in that manner? No, I'm looking for people who have HR experience. Uh, quite frankly, the education level, if I could get somebody who's a college graduate, uh, I'd love to have that person in there. But I would suggest to you that a college graduate wouldn't accept that job at $45,000 a year. Okay, next we have Alderman Reckie. Uh Thank you, Your Honor. I was wondering uh, if I could make a motion to amend um, to separate out the reorganization um, from the um, hiring trees lift. Okay, right now, um, if I'm not mistaken, we only have a motion on the lifting the hiring freeze for the position. Uh, we have not yet brought forward with a motion the uh, reorganization. Uh, 657, correct? Was it? Okay. Sorry. No, I take that back. We are 667. Right now, right now we are uh, simply discussing, um, which we started at a while back here. Right now we are simply discussing 651. If we would have a, can we bring a motion forward to discuss 667 and take them together? Mm -hmm. So moved. I've been pushing my button for the last 15 minutes. What's going on? Um, <laughs> you've been pushing your button. Yes. You're, 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 okay, Alderman Bowers, Thank please you. stand up. Thank you. Um, but careful with your microphone. Yeah. And, and I don't know what's up. If you push it on and you push it off and you push it on, you push it off. If I well, look down here and it's off, it, it means never, it's not never, on. Uh, uh, blink, so. Okay, please speak. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay, I, I'm almost speechless here for uh, sixty some thousand dollars. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, can anybody in the, in the council apply for this job? <laughs> Uh, we happen to have a, uh, a, a uh, an ordinance that says you can't take a city position until two years after you've been a council member, but you're welcome to apply that. Next, Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and just th don't think that I'm wrapped up in the education. I, I'm not. There's no magic bullet in a college education, but having just hired two administrative people at Johnsonville. $45,000 for what we expect this person to do is just way above market rates. And this person isn't going to pay anything into their own retirement fund and nothing for their health care unless there's a great new non-rep pay plan coming I don't know about. But again, so it's just, it's just not affordable for the citizens of Sheboygan to make this system work better when we're talking tonight later about whether we can afford firemen. So again, I urge my colleagues to vote no tonight. Thank you again, Alderman Bauck. We had a motion and a second to uh, bring 667 forward. Yes. Correct? Okay, um, I'm bringing 667 forward. For a vote along, we will take them separately, but under discussion on 667, do we, uh, all in favor of bringing it forward? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are now discussing 667. Yes, uh, we would need a suspension of the rules if we are going to take them together this evening. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask for suspension of the rules also on document 6-67. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion on suspension of the rules only. Objection. 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 Okay. We uh, under discussion on suspension of the rules. Alderman Member Fleisch, would you like to speak on uh, that? No. With the obje objection, we should go to a vote uh, to go to suspend the rules or not. Uh, and the reasons are the same as pre previous. Okay. Six we will take one. a roll call vote on suspension of the rules unless people would like to speak on suspension of the rules. Anybody speaking on suspension of the rules on 667? If there is none, roll call please on suspension. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Path? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. No. Vanderweel? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> be a no. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? No. Horn? No. Bauk? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Isha? Aye. Ten eyes, six no's.
Okay, the motion fails on suspension. It requires a three-quarter vote to suspend the rules. So, um, we do not have suspension of the rules on 6-67. So at this point, um, President Kisher? I'd like to make a motion to send this back to salary and grievance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Okay, let's uh, to send this back to salary and grievance. I had some discussion on that. Sure. Alderman Redflesh, may we have a parliamentary uh, comment? Yeah. Uh, no, just actually a uh, question. Are we, does it ref also refer to 651 being yes. referred back as yes. well? Both. So it's both documents. Both okay. documents. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to send both 651 and 667 back to S&G salary and grievances. Alderman Boren. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy with that motion and I'll support it to send it back and for two specific reasons. Number one, I want salary and grievance to take a look at the educational requirements <coughs> as they would compare to a uh, private sector position in the community and I also want them to take a look at the pay range. I very much appreciate the job uh, Mr. Rice has done since he's been our acting HR director and I, and I like his plan but I just can't support the salary level and I want him to take another look at the education requirements. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Uh, under discussion on, sending, discussion on sending them back to committee, anybody, uh, Vice President Kittleson, do you have a comment on that? I, well, <clears throat> I was just going to say, we're also going, we're going to be expecting a lot out of these pe the people that, the person that takes this job. Not only are they going to be doing the benefits, but we're also trying to implement a wellness program to bring down insurance costs. I think we're going to spend some money here to try and save some money. And it seems our, our efforts have been futile up to now. We need to really focus on this and go forward and make some things happen in order to see some, some reduction in, in costs. So I couldn't agree more. Thank you. I, thank, thank you, you. Alderperson Kittleson. Uh, Alderman Renfleisch, did you have any more comments? No. Thank you. Okay, uh, on uh, sending this back to committee. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Back to committee it goes. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Okay, we have uh, 652, we also have along with that uh, 643. Um, 643 by the purchasing agent submitting a report relative to the attempts to sell a 1986 Pierce Arrow pumper truck. And 6-52 by Alderpersons Gisha, Bauk, Boren, Hammond, and Radke authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into agreement for the sale of the 1986 Pier, Pierce Arrow pumper truck to Fire Unlimited LLC of Appleton, Wisconsin. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of officer be placed, be accepted and placed on file and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Apparently we have more information. Uh, yes, we have more information on 6-52. Uh, 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 we will also have to, according to this, have a suspension of the rules on the, <laughs> on the sale. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'll rescind both of those uh, and just deal with the first hurdle first, and that is ask for a suspension, and I will explain on 652 the sale of an old truck. Very good. Uh, under discussion on suspension of the rules, do we have a second on suspension of the rules? Second. second. Under discussion on suspension of the rules, President Kisha. Thank you. This is kind of one of those strike why the iron's hot. For the reason for the swiftness or the need for suspension, we have somebody with cash in their hand willing to buy it. Uh, this shouldn't be confused with a different truck that we have sold for a larger amount. This was, a, this was almost exactly the amount that we were expecting to get okay. to this vehicle, if we can move on it because somebody wants it. Great. Any further discussion on the suspension of the rules? If there is nobody, is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? There is not. Rules are suspended. President Kisha. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to uh, move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second on 643 and 652 under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 
Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Horn? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Yes. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 653 and 654 lie over. 655 and 656 to be re referred. Report of Committee 5657 by Public Works making no recommendations to Council regarding the communication from Stevie B's landscaping requesting that the City move forward with the proposed free tree re removal program. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to accept the report of Committee and move to approve the hiring of Stevie B's landscaping uh, regarding their proposal to be cutting down trees and also removing, uh, doing stump grinding. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under, under discussion, Mayor, I was unable to attend the Public Works Committee meeting last Tuesday night, so if I could uh, uh, defer to Alderman Heidemann, who is the Vice Chairman of Public Works, who can fill the council in on the discussion and why they reached a recommendation of no recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Heidemann, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. There was only three of us there. Mm -hmm. So two of us voted in favor to send it back to the council to get a vote. So. If there would have been one more person, we, but I would have considered it more of a favorable <coughs> recommendation. But again, it was just, uh, one, just one alderman sided with me. And again, what's important to recognize here that at that committee level, when we, we talked to Director Bittner about this, he saw this as an opportunity for to get a job done in the community that needs to be done and allows the rest of his department to do more work that's on a little higher priority. And, and, and that's important for us to look at. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's my understanding that Stevie B's proposal, uh, which would include stump grinding, was a cost to the city, and I didn't see a fight for him with this. I was just looking for it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, the stump grinding had, uh, right. had a cost involved. Yeah, it needs to have a fight for him. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at that committee meeting, we, uh, uh, it was up to Director Bittner. Director Bittner has only, in, uh, only indicated to us that he would be doing the tree cutting, which was at no cost at all. Then the stump grinding was not going to be, that he wasn't going to do the stump grinding. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Uh, Alderman Hammond, I believe you have a direct comment on this? I do. Please. Um, Information? Well, the conversation was about, I believe, about doing it all, but one of the things we were looking at is he, he put together a bid. I'm, I'm hoping everybody had a chance to look at this, but you know, Stevie B's was definitely much higher in cost on the stump grinding, um, and I asked uh, Deputy Director Beeble to go back and find out if those two were mutually exclusive. In other words, for some of these vendors that offered lower cost to do the stump grinding, if they would do that without getting the trees. And I haven't heard an answer back on that one, so um, I just wanted to clarify that. So at this point, we don't have a clarification if stump grinding was a, a separate uh, bid. If they were mutually exclusive, correct. Alderman Hanna? Uh, actually, we have Alderman Rinfleisch here. Please. Uh, I guess I should have a separate question if Alderman Hanna wants to respond to the first question. Um, the RC we have, if we're asking to be approved the RC, it's going to be to we approve not taking a recommendation. This is the way I read the RC right now. Uh, we're not... I'll wait. Uh, because we don't have a recommendation to approve or deny, when I vote to... When I vote to say yes to the RC, it's going to say I agree with that there should be no recommendation. Right. So I'm a little confused on this is to see. Um, I think Alden Boren's motion uh, covered that saying that we go ahead and do the agreement. Initially in our packets, when we received this, we had an agreement with that. But we don't have an agreement right now. If that agreement's been modified or not, all I have is this RC. Uh, I would ask that if uh, we move forward that we can get an agreement signed that can come back to council that we can approve, or at least something that, that Steve is willing to sign. Um that I can take a look at. It, it sounds to me that unless somebody has an explanation of uh, what we're actually dealing with here, are we dealing with tree removal and no stump grinding? Uh, if we are dealing with stump grinding, uh, we obviously have to have a fight form involved. Um, I think at this point, somebody should probably make a motion to send it back to committee. Alderman Hanna? I would like to make a motion that it gets sent back to committee. Second. I have a motion and a second to send this back to committee for clarification. President Kisha? And, and I agree with that motion because we really don't have an actionable item. Exactly. That would come in the form of a resolution to accept the contract, and that would make it a, con a binding contract between the city, and maybe that contract then would be able to spell out one or the other. I'm in support of, uh, of taking the, 
zero fee tree trimming, uh, but I would like to have clarification on the costs if we're stump grinding. Um, thank you. On uh, s discussion on sending it back to committee, Pres or Alderman Boren, please. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to make a point. I don't think it's out of order. Uh, I checked with uh, Mr. Beeble, and the $12, the $12, I wish, $12,000 $12, is, uh, is a budgeted item for, uh, uh, the, I can't remember the name of the account, but it's the account that they use for like testing the water at the quarry and that type of thing. And it was Mr. Beeble's opinion when I talked to him that there is money in the budget for the $12,000 if the council sees fit to approve this after we send it back to committee. Uh, there is money there for it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boer and Alderperson Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess we've been through this before. Our last uh, committee at Public Works had this communication. We dealt with Stevie B. Um, we've been through it. There were, there were some difficulties. Um, at the end of the year, we decided, no, that we were not going to go this route again. So I, I guess I don't know what's changed. And, and then uh, also, if this is going to be sent back to committee, uh, what are the rules and regulations? Right, right now, we don't have an actionable item. We don't have and, an actionable And we don't okay. have a clarification if we did have an actionable item on what it exactly is being voted on. Okay. So, so I don't think we have any choice right now but to send it back to committee. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, other comments on sending this back to committee? I have Alderman Hammond's light lit. None? No, Anybody okay. else? Alderman Hanna? <laughs> Mr. Uh, I'll be the Hammond over here then. <laughs> okay, Alderman Heideman, you are next in line. <laughs> and again, yeah, I saw this at the committee of the whole meeting. I, I watched it on the DVD. It's hilarious where the, the buttons don't match up. Uh, uh, no, they all match up. I know who's who, and you, yeah. you actually did just light up. Here's the thing. Um, at the committee meeting, Director Bittner told us, if he didn't want to give one tree to Stevie B, he doesn't have to give them one tree. He could sign a contract to give him, uh, have all the stump removal in the, in the entire city, and if he did not want to give him that stump removal, he doesn't have to do it. So what's going to come back to our committee is we're going to be voting on removing the stump removal and giving him the trees for, he'll do the trees for nothing which I don't, know what the, I don't know what the change is, and this, this is actually a benefit to our, our public works department because it gets something done in the city that really needs to be done, and at no cost. I don't know what, I don't know what the confusion <clears throat> is other than the fact that somebody wants to do something for the community at no, at no cost, and it's a job that needs to be done in our city. Um, I, I agree, Alderman Heideman, but uh, right now we don't have an actual, actionable item. All we have is a communication. Um, so I, you know, I don't think we have a choice at this point but to send it back. That would be my opinion, and maybe Alderman Rinfleisch would like to comment on that. <laughs> um, my initial concern was that the uh, recommendation is to make no recommendation on the report committee, and we're asking to the report committee be accepted and adopted. Right. So yes, vote would adopt mm -hmm. a no recommendation. Right. And I understand the, the, that we we're trying to go forward, help public works out, but I don't, I don't see how. Uh, accepting a no recommendation gets us forward. Uh, plus, I think the issues that we've faced, uh, do we have stump grinding, do we not have stump grinding? I, I agree that we just need to send it back, clarify for the council so we know what we're voting on next time. Thank you. Your Honor, I make a motion to file, and then it can all just be recreated correctly out of committee yep, yep. to satisfy everyone's wishes. Second. Motion to file in a second. Any discussion on that? It'll clean the whole thing up, start from scratch. Um, obviously, the committee has some, some good background knowledge. Um, and it can come back in a clean manner. Any discussion on that? All in favor of filing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a roll call vote on filing. A, uh, a, a no. yes vote will file. Kath? No. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Horn? No. Falk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Eleven to five. Eleven yeses. Okay. Document is filed. Um, moving on. Okay, we are looking at uh, report of committee six. 
6-58 by law and licensing recommending that taxi cab driver's license number 8562 be denied based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on her application and failure to cooperate with committee. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, is Lisa Edmark present? She's not present, Your Honor. Please continue. Okay. Uh, Ms. Edmark uh, did re reveal some convictions. Uh, she did fail to uh, list uh, operating after revocation conviction. Keep in mind, this is a taxi cab operator's license. Um, um, so something that uh, happened four years ago, you would think would, that the applicant would recall. Uh, she also did not appear in either times so when we asked her to call in. Uh, so uh, based on her failure to cooperate with the committee and uh, for failing to reveal all, all violations, we ask that we den deny. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Hiddleston? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Yes. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carries 6 59 to be referred. 6 60, which is reports of committees 7. By law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators <coughs> license number 7442 based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions and pending charges on the application and the record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderman Rinfleisch, please. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, is Blanca Playo here? She's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, I did receive a phone call from uh, Blanca Palaio's mother this afternoon saying that she would not be able to make the meeting for medical reasons um, today. Um, even with this, we do ask that um, uh, we deny the license or support the recommendation of the committee to <coughs> deny the license. Uh, there are two pending um, convictions or pending convictions, misdemeanors uh, for battery and disorderly conduct. Um, when, uh, we asked about uh, the, the issue. Uh, and um, we were told that um, she does not remember the incidences that uh, occurred this year. Um, there was also uh, past obstructions and disorderly conduct uh, misdemeanors uh, that um, in her past that uh, we had felt that showed that uh, as a safety concern to the community that uh, we felt it was best to deny her license. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Born? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Yes. Decker? Aye. Kisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Path? 16 aye. ayes. Uh, 15 ayes, one yes. <laughs> 6-61 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 6096 based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the application and the record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I ask the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second. Please continue. Is Michael Miller here? He is here, Your Honor. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the committee had felt, um, after uh, discussing the issue with Michael Miller, um, that uh, it was best for the safety of the community to deny the license. Um, on the application, Mr. Miller did list a disorderly conduct and a theft in 2007-2008. He did not list uh, convictions from 2001, including two obstructing an officer, uh, and one for disorderly conduct in 2005, and in 2007 a resisting arrest. Uh, when um, asked um, Michael Miller told the, co the committee basically that all of the um, all the convictions from 2001 2008 uh, were basically the fault of a, another person uh, that um, he was in a relationship with at that time. 
um, felt that uh, not taking ownership uh, and not taking a, uh, of the problems and not seeking to make the change uh, poses a safety hazard to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman uh, Renflesh. Mr. Miller, would you like to speak regarding this? Yes, I would. Um, I did look up my record, and the stuff that was omitted um, does not show on my record, but I was involved in it, and unfortunately, it was in my past, and I'm trying to move on from that. I'm going back to school um, to try to better myself. And like I said before, um, I didn't purposely omit those things on my application. I just did not recall them. And when I looked up my Wisconsin court <coughs> system document, they're not even listed on here. So um, I did my best to um, list all the information that I could when I first submitted my application for the beverage, beverage license. Are there any questions from the council? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, sir, where are you, where are you gonna be working with your uh, bartender's license? Uh, Qmart. Qmart? Yes. Okay, and uh, where are you going to school and what are you studying? I'm going to school currently at LTC for marketing. Okay, Alderman Rinfleisch, on your report there, what was the last, uh, what was the last offense or last couple and what were they? Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the last um, uh, event took place in 2008. Uh, to clarify a little bit, um, while the applicants would not be working at a tavern situation and it would be a Q-Mart, uh, one of the concerns was the theft was a theft uh, and use of a uh, stolen credit card. One was that apparently was found and was um, uh, used with the help of assistance of a friend. Uh, that posed a concern for us as well. So while well, uh, the theft was a deep concern to us because it was use of a credit card that would be used in a convenience store situation. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Alderman Bowers. Yes. Uh, is your current employer uh, aware of your theft violation? Yes, she is actually here. She was my employer before at the other mini mart where this took place, took place. and she is still my current employer. Okay, now you're currently going to school at LTC and taking marketing. Yes. Is this your first year, second year? This, I'm going on my second year. Second year, okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Are there any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, a roll call vote, please. Montemayor. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Radke. No. Renfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Wangaman? Aye. Horn? No. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Gittleson? No. Eleven no's, five yes. Uh, motion fails. Six dash sixty-two. Alderman Renflesh. Your Honor, if it's the will of the uh, council to uh, grant the license, I think a motion needs to be made to grant the license. Uh, I am unwilling to do so, so I defer to someone else. Would anybody like to make a motion to grant the license to Mr. Miller? Motion to grant the license to second. Mr. Miller. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to grant the license. Under discussion on granting the license? If there is none, roll call please on granting the license. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warren? Aye. Bauk? No. Bowers? Yes. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kath? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Two, three, four, five, six. Eleven, yes, five, no. Motions carries, the license is granted. 6 62 by law and licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 8546 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the licensed activity and failure to cooperate fully with the committee. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Uh, I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adapted. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Uh, is Doris M. Fry here? She's here, Your Honor. Go ahead, Alderman Norman Flesh. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Fry uh, came for us um, after her fourth invitation to appear. She finally did. Um, uh, our previous recommendation was to deny based off of non-cooperation. Uh, that recommendation still stands for non-cooperation. In addition, now that we have interviewed uh, Ms. Fry, um, we discovered that um, prior to uh, getting and gaining a taxi cab driver's license previously, um, she did not actually have a driver's license. Um, that she has three convictions for operating while suspended. Uh, and since they were applying for a taxi cab license, the disregard <coughs> of the laws of the state uh, to actually get a license, uh, we again felt the safety of the community is at, is at risk uh, by granting a license to someone such as Ms. Fry. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rindflesh. Ms. Fry, would you like to be heard? Um, I've had my license now for um, almost a year or a little over a year, and I have not had any conviction, no driving. I n haven't gotten pulled over for nothing, not speeding, nothing. Um, and um, I have my license, and I, um, I think I, I mean, I'm doing good. I'd like to, I'm a dispatcher and I'd like to become a part-time driver when they need a driver. You're a dispatcher at the cab company now? Right. Any questions from uh, the council? Alderman Rinfleisch? Uh Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Pillai, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Ms. Fry, was there a particular reason you did not get a license previously um, while you, when you were arrested uh, the first time for operating without a license? I was just scared I didn't, I was just scared to go and get them. And it wasn't, when I did go, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Any further questions from the council? Alderman Bowers? Yes, is this your uh, sole occupation with the taxi cab company? Right. Uh, you've been there how many years? Um, August, it will be a year. Be a year. And you're the sole support of yourself? Of me and my child, yeah. And your child? How old is your child? She's 15. 15. Yes. And uh, does she work at all? So, no. no. She goes to school. So this is your sole support of you and your child? Right. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Does any, are there any further questions from the council? Alderman Redflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, seeing a pattern occurring here um, within the, the committee's recommendations, we do not set out to be uh, hard on the applicants. We do not set out to be unfair. Um, but also the questions of sole support, um, of income, of other opportunities really don't come up. Uh, that's not the purview, of, I feel, of the Law and Licensing. The Law and Licensing Committee is to see if the person qualifies for a license uh, as per our standards and what kind of standards we wish to set for licensing people in our community. Um, and uh, uh, you know, vote with your conscience. I, I'm not gonna try to convince anybody else of that, but uh, I, I do see that uh, um, questions that don't really have anything to do with the safety of the public uh, and the licensee's willingness to obey the rules has anything to do with uh, the ability to uh, have and su support themselves in that job. Uh, it's not my responsibility for them to uh, find uh, avocations. It's my responsibility to make sure that those apply for licenses are qualified. Thank you. As chairman of the committee, thank you for your input. Alderman Versi. Thank you. Just one real quick question. Do you need to have this license to stay as a dispatcher for your job? Not for not to stay as a dispatcher, but to be able to drive. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And Alderman Versi, are there any further questions for Ms. Fry? Thank you, Ms. Fry. <clears throat> Okay, roll call vote please on six Clarify dash. Votes, okay, a, a yes vote will deny the license. Six dash 62, roll call please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. 
Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. <coughs> Kath? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Ratke? Aye. <coughs> 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. Reports of committees 8. 6-63 by finance authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget establish revenue and appropriations for general obligation taxable refunding bonds for state trust fund loans and for general ob obligation notes for capital improvement projects. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. <coughs> Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Yes. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Path? Aye. Kittleson? <coughs> Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 6-64 by finance authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an intergovernmental cooperative agreement with Sheboygan County for joint purchase of a computer aided dispatch <laughs> records management system also known as CAD RMS. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we reviewed this uh, uh, item in finance at length. There was a little issue in one of the paragraphs. Uh, it was clarified with me from, uh, from the uh, city purchasing agent. Uh, however, the county, we got kind of an old version of the, uh, of the transaction. The county, I believe, acted on it last end of last week. I'd prefer to look at their document and come back, so I'm asking if this referred back to council, or pardon me, back to the finance committee, uh, uh, just so we can bring a clean document in without amending. Second. We have a motion to refer back. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on referring back to finance. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. 6-65 uh, through 6-68 lies over. Matters laid over 11. 5-56, resolution number 27-10-11 by Alderman Hanna lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire four firefighter paramedics. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bowers. I don't know if this is the time and place to do it, but anyway, I'd like to amend the uh, resolution. Can they do that now? Uh, you can make an amendment, a friend, um, an, an amendment to the resolution. The amendment resolution 27-10-11. Amend to do not lift hiring freeze, reopen fire station number five, and eliminate the ambulance service. Um. Second. We have a motion and a second to go from lifting the hiring freeze to do not lifting the hiring freeze. Um, and opening up station number five. And Alderman Rinfleisch. Getting out of the ambulance business. And getting out of the ambulance business. Okay, do we have a second on that uh, amendment? I we have a motion it. and a second. Uh, <coughs> Alderman Boren seconded that amendment. Uh, discussion on the amendment only. Only on the amendment. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would defer to the city attorney, but um, the uh, Roberts rules and our, and our, as adopted by this council allows amendments that do not change the nature of the resolution, is that correct? Yes, I guess the issue is germaneness, uh, and I think I don't see that the proposed amendment is totally opposite of what the proposed resolution is, and I, in my opinion, it would not be germane, but that's a call by the chair of the council, by the... So yeah. my, then I would do a point of order um, uh, to disregard the motion as being non-germane to the amendment, to the uh, resolution. Um, 
In my, in my years on this council, I have never seen anybody uh, totally uh, try to amend something to change the original intent mm -hmm. um, of the resolution. So I would agree. I'll with withdraw that. my second. We have a withdrawal of the second. Do you withdraw your motion, Alderman Bowers? No. Would anybody else like to second Alderman Bowers motion? Would anybody else like to second Alderman Bowers motion? Motion fails by failure of the second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on 5-56 under discussion on the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bauck, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, oops. We've been talking about this uh, for a while, so I'll be brief. Um, uh, former Chief Zyre did a great job tonight, a very impassioned plea, giving us a, a sense of history of what happened. Um, he mentioned a potential attack on uh, represented employees, and I hope, and I don't know if he was referring to anything that I've said or written, but I hope he doesn't see it that way. Uh, that isn't the intent of what I've written at all. Um, what, what I have, what I'm speaking out about is, and it was very evident at the committee of the whole meeting a week or so ago, that every department head we called up uh, when asked, why can't you do the services? Why do we have to cut services? The answer was virtually the same from every single one. Well, I can't, I, I can't afford as many people, so I can't get as much work done. Why can't you afford as many people? Well, the, the per employee costs have skyrocketed, and I just can't afford that many people without my budget going up. So the reason why we have to talk, have these hard conversations about cutting policemen, cutting firemen, cutting PW, wherever we're going to cut people, is because the, the cost of people is what is uh, driving this unsustainable condition. Um, I appreciate the local 43 uh, offering that 2%, but it's, it's just not enough. It's not enough for me anyway. Um, our contribution, just uh, to remind everyone, our city employees pay nothing into their own uh, retirement fund. Uh, and that isn't even statutorily required. The reason they don't pay anything of their own retirement, the reason they don't invest a penny in their own future is because they've negotiated that out through the contract process. And, and, and it's my contention that the reason that is, the reason the taxpayers of Sheboygan have sort of tolerated that is because it happens behind closed doors. Uh, and so uh, in a recent uh, uh, article that I penned, I call for them to be leaders and to, to begin to conduct our negotiations in, in the open, where everybody can participate and understand. Uh, it was really interesting to hear someone uh, uh, ask, hey, those numbers about uh, uh, quoted, he must have fudged the numbers, because that's always what they do in those negotiations. You're playing funny with the numbers. Um, but they're from the US Department of Labor and Statistics. And someone says, well, it's hard to find you know, a, a good analogy or a good comparable for a fireman and a policeman. Because what they do is so special, you can't find that. It's so dangerous and all those things. Um, well, if the US Department of Labor and Statistics, I'm pretty sure they got some smart people. And what they found out is that when you put wages and benefits together, um, a local state uh, or city employee earns 44% more, 44% more with wages and benefits uh, than a typical uh, private sector employee from that region. So those are the numbers. That's not Alderman Bauck. That's the U.S. government speaking. Um, and I'll close with just one last thing that, again, drives home why this conversation has got to change. It's got to change. And I quote from the Wall Street <laughs> Journal last week. It's an article about uh, investors looking past all the red flags in the muni market. I probably should have mentioned this when we voted on the bonds we just voted to, to bond for. Um, but the bond market, the muni bond market, is a 28 trillion market, $2.8 trillion America has invested in it. Um, market specialists say gaps between muni revenue and expenditures are unsustainable. The day of reckoning is here, uh, this chief uh, investment officer of Brown Brothers Harriman, but municipal investors continue to act as if there's no default risk in municipal bonds. So what that means in regular talk is the same thing that's happened in the housing market and that's caused this economic recession is about to happen in the foreseeable future in the muni bond market. And so uh, no, no person different than uh, uh, Warren Buffett, who is arguably the greatest investor of our generation, um, ha, uh, says that why has he liquidated 20% uh, of his holdings in muni bonds? He has $4 billion invested in cities in this country. He's pulled 20% of that out. Why? because he's worried about how municipalities will pay for retirement and health benefits for public workers and that the federal government is ultimately going to have to bail out the states and he doesn't want any part of that market. Uh, one last bit, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate it. 
Uh, Mr. Buffett's, uh, he's trimmed his municipal, I don't know how I would rate them myself. He has no idea. Uh, and, and that's something we talked about in the finance committee, how the bond rating systems have changed. And, and he says, it's all black magic. They don't even know how they're evaluating it because they're making it up as they go along. So you put all that together, Mr. Mayor, and again, I, I can't support hiring four more city employees that will earn so much more uh, th they'll contribute nothing to their, uh, their future, and yet they will double dip and take seconds when they're retired and continue to draw on that very lovely luxury retirement program. So in until the bargaining units come to the table and talk about how they're going to change that paradigm, I can't support this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Um, I, I, I take that as a compliment that we at least bonded for this city at the right time. So Right thank before you. the crash, yes, sir. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, if, if I may... Uh, I, I would uh, like to stress uh, we will invoke Robert's rules of order on this issue that everybody can speak no more than twice. Uh, I think we've discussed this once or twice in the past, just <laughs> so we're not here until midnight, if at all possible. Next, we have Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, obviously, I'm not going to support this. I mean, all of our other departments are taking hits. Our DPW is taking hits. Our <laughs> Everyone's taking hits, but we're going to hire and add more back to our fire department. It's not fair to them unless we can amend what we have on here to say that four new hires are gonna cut the grass, the city parks, that we're not gonna have cut any longer. If someone can make that amendment, that would be great, added to their duties on top of this to cut grass, then we'd be okay hiring these four. But besides not that happening, <laughs> you can't keep doing what our city is. DPW keeps the city pretty, trying to bring people here, um, businesses here, when they come to visit, that's what they're gonna see. They don't see the firefighters in the station, they don't see them running down the street. They don't see that. That's not something that brings businesses here. So you have to look at long term for the city, which is what's going to bring us business? How are we going to keep the city looking decent? So I don't support it just because we can't afford it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Next, we have President Gisha. Thank you, and I'll be very brief on this. Uh, I just don't want the public, the thing that always just bothers me the most, especially in this topic, is uh, information the public receives that isn't accurate or is couched in a certain way. I don't want anybody to think, for accuracy's sake, that the fire department has special rules for it. For instance, the grass cutters, uh, Alderperson Versi mentioned, actually make more than firemen and make more than on their starting wage, I believe, than firemen, even if it was equal. They all have the same benefits. They've all got the same Wisconsin retirement system. They've all got the same health care thing. They've all got it. I sat there. I fulfilled the obligation and did it, and I learned a lot. And you cannot expect, nor will it ever happen on this planet, to have uh, one municipality change that paradigm that, is, that has been the responsibility, and it happened because of Tommy Thompson, in the state of Wisconsin. There's only one represented union in the entire state of Wisconsin that pays into the Wisconsin retirement system, and that is the state patrol who pay one half of 1% negotiated down from one and a half percent. So <clears throat> what we have to deal with is what we have to deal with. I don't like it. I think it stinks. I think it's horrible for the taxpayer. But I think the impression that's somewhat left, I assume unpurposely, and I, I believe that, is that these darn firemen have this special rule. And it just isn't the case. You can talk about tree cutters. You can talk about grass cutters. It's all the same deal. Um, I do, uh, I do believe that the 44% figure is, is going to go down. I think it has to go down. There's, there's, there's movements across the country for it to go down, and now is the time for it to go down. Um, there's some figures coming out regarding uh, the cleaning of City Hall that um, actually will make that number small. Uh, so I am in full support <clears throat> of that. Now, M uh, attention was paid to the HR pay thing. I agree with Alderman Bauck on that. That's a non-rep position. We have the flexibility to send it back to com the committee and massage it and do all sorts of things. That flexibility under the state of Wisconsin <coughs> system of, of mediation arbitration, not a rule that says that employees can't pay for this or they can't pay for that, under mediation arbitration, which is the king of making all this happen. It is the key that you put in the ignition to make our whole system set up. Based on that system, it is what it is. Uh, interesting article in the Journal Sentinel, I think Alderman uh, Hanna uh, sent it into council recently uh, from a gubernatorial candidate talking about just this. It needs to happen in Madison. 
We need to put all pressure. We have a budget resolution that even notes <coughs> that uh, coming up next. It will kill every municipality in the state, not, the, not even just the city of Sheboygan. So is it a matter of grass cutters versus firemen or whatever? It's all the same. They all get the same package. And that goes for elected officials in uh, certain elected officials. I'll throw you in there, Mayor. You get a Wisconsin retirement system, City Attorney McLean, all of them. And, and I'm not saying they're bad people because of it. It is the system. And it has to be changed in Madison so it can be uniformed across. It will not break with the city of Sheboygan. I wish it, it would. I spent 150 hours of my life trying to make it break, and it's just not the case. Thank you. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Bourne. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryan. I've got a couple specific questions that either Nancy Buss could answer or the chief on these documents that are attached uh, to document number 556. My first question is, uh, was brought to, uh, brought to my attention by a constituent that the, on, the, on the first document that the hiring date of, that starts out hiring date of 7610, down a ways uh, about halfway, it says 12, a figure of $12,768.11, 5610 retirement savings. My question is, Chief, how are we going to get retirement savings if we're replacing that person and we're going to be paying into the retirement fund for the new employee. Am I missing something? I'm not understanding that or what, what, what's your comment on that? Uh, that line on that document is a position that is funded in the 2010 budget. That is a person that retired mm -hmm. on 5-6 of this year. The, that uh, number, that $12,000 number, is the savings between 5-6 and 7-6 of not having him here of a budgeted amount and we're not paying it. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, on the back where it, where it starts out 2011, <clears throat> uh, down on the bottom where the asterisk is, asterisk it says these, these estimated expenses and savings based on a 2011 fire department budget funded to the 2010 fire department level. Now I know we have maintenance of effort for, for fire and police as far as maintaining the budget, but my question is how can we possibly make the assumption that you're going to be funded in 2011 that the same as you are in 2010 irregardless of maintenance of effort when we've got, you know, when we're asking the library to give up 250 DPW, 200,000, and perhaps cut, as Mr. Bittner said, up to four employees. And of course, the, 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 uh, the, uh, fire de uh, the police department is gonna have to be part of this equation of how we're gonna balance the budget. I just don't see how you can make the assumption with our budget situation that you're gonna be uh, funded in 2011 as you were in 2010 based on the scenario we're facing. That sentence had nothing to do with maintenance of effort. I had to give you a baseline right. that you were able to figure out what the cost was going to be next year right. compared to this year's budget. Obviously, none of us have uh, health insurance rates, so I based those on uh, this year's rates. Mm -hmm. But I think you're really, that's a huge assumption. Uh, it's a huge assumption for, and it relates back to an email that Alderman Balk and I got from Director Hansen the morning at 6.21 a.m. in the morning when he, when he uh, before he started working for the county, when he brought to our attention that we have to be very, very cautious about lifting this hiring freeze. There may be dollars here, you know, with, with, what, you've, with what you've produced to get us through this year, but uh, to paraphrase what uh, former Finance Director Hansen said, He's very concerned that you'd have to lay these people off in six months if we hire them now because of the assumption you're making on this budget that you're going to be funded at the same level in 2011. I mean, if you're asked to, if you're asked to do your part at the end of the day and come up with $200,000 in savings, I don't see that as any different than DPW. You're going to have to lay people off. There's no way to get around it. So I have a, I have a problem hiring four people now that we may have to lay off in January. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Unless, and the other thing I'm disappointed on, we had a three hour discussion, or almost three hours, the other night at the Committee of the Whole, and I voted for that document that came out of the Committee of the Whole. I was looking for that document in tonight's agenda, 
And part of that agenda, or part of that resolution or recommendation to the council that came out of Committee of the Whole, uh, there were two, two amendments made. One was going to be a letter that the union was, was going to come up with, with some long-term concessions. Uh, what they were going to do, and I want to stress long-term, not for a year or even 18 months, for years down the road in Wisconsin, possibly Wisconsin retirement and the health insurance and possibly some wage concessions. Uh, I, wanted, I was looking forward to seeing that in advance of this meeting tonight. Uh, so I don't have information that I need as far as those concessions that were going to come forward. It's a shame that that document wasn't on the agenda tonight so we could, we could, could have discussed the recommendation that came out of the Committee of the Whole to keep all fire, fire stations open and keep the ambulance business. And I said I voted, I voted for that the last time to move that forward because I was anxious to see what our union partners were going to come up with for this solution that we are facing in 2011. And I also appreciated the, uh, the amendment that Alderman Hammond made that by the end of the year we do have to come up with a scenario of how we're going to move forward. But uh, I'm just, again, I, I'm not prepared to vote for this tonight because I don't have that letter from the union on what they're willing to do for 2011. And I think that's very important. They have to be a partner. If we're going to ask, again, if we're going to ask you to give up $200,000 hypothetically next year, and I don't like to deal in hypotheticals, but I'm going what we're asking the other departments, how are we going to hire these people and then have to lay them off in, in six months? Thank you. If you'd like to comment. Uh, that letter has been submitted, uh, came through my office to Human Resources. Uh, it is a 3% concession for next year. Um, you will note that I did not figure those savings into my calculations. And I believe that invitation has been uh, put out there by Local 483 to sit at the table and work on long-term savings. Continue, Alderman Board. If I could just follow up. That doesn't do me any good tonight, Chief Herman. And the other thing is the 3% the, the three, the 3 concession is wonderful for next year. But... Uh, they're also going to be paying 2% less for their health insurance next year. We're at 12% right now for your, for your department. Next year it's going back to 10%. So that's still a, a raise of, I don't know what the dollar, the dollar difference would be, but it's, 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 still a, it's still a percent raise for next year. And again, I was looking forward to having, first of all, if, if the document is somewhere, it would have been nice for the council to be able to take a look at it so that it's on black and white and it's signed by somebody, perhaps the union had signed it, what they were willing to do. Uh, we don't have that, and I'm asking to, being asked to hire four people. And again, I don't want to hire these people and have to lay them off. First of all, it's not fair. It's not fair to those four individuals if we hire them and have to lay them off. And I just don't see any other scenario that your department is not going to be asked to uh, to make uh, to come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars, and that needs people next year. And I, I, I just don't see any possible scenario that that not in addition, in addition to the library uh, and DPW and the police department and your and your department are going to have to be part of the solution. And it's either going to be concessions or it's you know w where are we going to come up with that money? It's impossible. And I guess, Alderman Bourne, I would go back to <clears throat> last year's star resolution to ask for 3% from each department. And I would tell you that I believe the fire department was a year ahead of time by giving up 8% of our budget. And the baseline that I figured the budget on, uh, the only variables are the health insurance premium. And as you said, if the council decides that each department needs to <coughs> cut an additional amount of money, I had no way of figuring that into next year's um, allotment of how we're going to pay for these firefighters. So I used what I had, and we are covered in 2011 without using the 3% that the firefighters have offered in their oh. letter of concession. Chief, if I may ask this 3%, is, that is 3% of what on the, the letter of concession? 3% of their wages. 3% of wages across the board and the, and the our represented firefighters? I guess I would ask uh, Mr. Rice to come up and address it. He, I believe, has the letter or was the last person that had it. Can we have a motion to open the floor? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of opening the floor to Tom Rice? Aye. 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 Opposed? Floor is open. I did not bring the letter with me. Uh, as I recall, the proposal was 
that the, uh, the firefighters would give up the 1.5% raise on January 1st and the 1.5% raise to them on July 1st and basically do the same thing that they did in 2010, uh, a 2% um, uh, additional contribution in, in the health insurance premium. Alderman Hanna. I think I do have the correct data. You were very close. Um, effective January 1st, 2011 through June 30th, 2011, one and a half percent of each employee's regular base pay will be deducted and applied as an employee contribution to the health insurance premium in addition to the 10% premium. Effective July 1st through December 31st, 3% of each employee's regular base pay will be deducted and applied to the employee contribution to the health insurance premium. This is in addition to the 10%. Um, in the year 2011, only employees receive only receive two days off to be taken in accordance with the department's leave of absence policy. Correct. The value of that proposal uh, is approximately ninety-five thousand dollars. Thank you. Uh, second time, um, Alderman Bauk. Thank Alderman you. Bowers, are you buzzed in? No. Just checking. Thank you, <laughs> Alderman Bauk. Thanks. And very brief this time, Mr. Mayor. Just to be mathematically correct, that's not three percent. That's two point two five percent. Correct. Um, so let's just get that out there for our friends in the press. Don't be using 3%. They're giving back 2.25. Um, and then secondly, uh, um, my friend and colleague mentioned that, uh, you know, how this is a, an institutional problem, and he's exactly right. But that institutional problem hasn't been around beyond memory. Our own good friend and colleague, Alderman Wongaman, who's been retired for a while, but not more than, what, probably 20, 22 years, um, <laughs> <laughs> he remembers paying half of his. He can, we can look Bill in the eye. He has his dignity intact because he contributed to his own future. He contributed to his own retirement. Uh, he paid half of his own retirement contribution to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. He paid 40% of his health care. He paid 40% of his health care premium. Whereas today we're down in those single digits and it's just not enough. And that's only been 20 years. So the time to change it is now. Uh, President Gish is right, the time is now, and Sheboygan is the place to begin that uh, paradigm shift. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Thank you again, Alderman Buck. Um, Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't think it's a surprise how people, people know how I feel about this issue. Um, and I agree with Alderman Buck. <coughs> the time is now uh, to change it. Um, but today, in the next six months, it's not going to change. Um, how that works. Um, so I agree, we need, we need to do it, not just the fire department, but, but around the world. We have some kind of change right now offered by, by a concessionary letter, um, but um, it's not enough. It's not a long-term solution to our problem. Um, I've been saying that forever. I've also been saying to people that I don't care who has the ambulance service, as long as it's provided to our residents at a, at a, re, at a, at a successful level, at a secure level, at a level of great response time, um, and that's done fairly so that both sides of the city get equal response times, and does it in a way that uh, um, doesn't raise my taxes. Um, right now, the only one way does that, and that's how the fire department have the ambulance service. Uh, the reason for that is, um, as we discussed, there is revenues that go to the city. I'm not saying the word profit. I'm not saying the word um, uh, marginal cost. I'm not saying any of that. The reality is, is that if we don't have the fire department do the ambulance service, we still have to pay for our fire department. We still have to pay 100% of the fire staff to be there. Uh, at some level, we don't know what level, it's open for discussion, but that doesn't go away. Uh, we're not gonna contract Orange Cross or some other ambulance service to do a fire protection service. Perhaps long term, there's other blended um, solution that we need to look at. And we discussed in the Committee of the Whole our solutions. And you are making a trip to look at some possible solutions. And if that's information that we need, uh, that's solutions that we can begin to make changes for, uh, for long-term changes, real change to the city of Sheboygan. But we have a vote tonight, and all the solutions don't change what's gonna happen tomorrow. Uh, what will happen tomorrow, though, is we have a budget problem. We have overtime for <coughs> the departments that isn't gonna be solved by sticking our head in the sand and voting no. 
by saying, nope, we're going to go for long-term solutions. That's great. How are you going to pay for overtime in the short term? Um, and you're right. There is only one way, and that's layoffs. So how are you going to provide fire protection service? How are you going to provide ambulance service to your constituents if you go ahead, vote no now, and force the layoffs, or force the overtime, or force the budget process, or force the layoff in other departments so we have to pay overtime in this department? Um, it's very easy to vote no. Um, my first few years here, I made a lot of enemies because it was, I voted no a lot because I stuck with my guts. It's very difficult to vote yes at times. And it's very, very difficult to vote yes because sometimes it's the right thing to do, even though it's, it's something you just don't <coughs> want to do. But the reality is force your hands. We have a budget problem. To some degree, it's self-created. And in many ways, it's state-created. Um, but we have a problem we have to deal with right now. Um, and that budget problem has consequences to the safety of the public. <coughs> so, uh, I know how I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote with a clean conscience to, to lift hiring freeze and hire, hire the four right now. We don't know what the future holds. Will there be retirements? Will there be um, in fire departments? Um, I agreed and voted with the amendments to uh, approve, only approve with uh, concessions, with a concessionary letter, and with um, some kind of long-term plan in place so we don't have to face this year by year by year. Uh, as Alderman Warren said, so we don't hire people to lay them off in six months. It's not what I'm in the business here to do. Um, but there's consequences I have to face. And I guess the question that I would have for the, for the fire chief uh, when I'm finished is, what happens if this doesn't pass today? What are the result, the consequences of voting no today? Thank you. <coughs> chief. The consequences are that we continue to uh, run as we are. On September 1st, the Northside station will close. Um, station five will reopen. And on December 1st, the downtown station will close and station four will reopen. And I think if I could address um, a subject that came up previously here, um, I think everybody agrees that this is a problem that's bigger than the city of Sheboygan. And it would be wonderful if it was solved on the state level. Unfortunately, um, state government tends to move even slower than local government. And you have a low, uh, uh, union here that has offered to sit down and discuss the issue. Now, I, I got to believe that they're a little bit <coughs> skittish from the last labor negotiations when they were given promises with a concession and it didn't follow through. You got a group that's willing to sit down at the table if you maybe even ask them to reopen the contract and sit down and, and talk about certain issues in that contract. It's going to be solved first at the local level before it's solved at the state level. I believe that. And Sheboygan could be the leader, but you got to ask them. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Hammond. Mm -hmm. Very heated, obviously very contentious, but a couple facts let's think about. First off, there's only four firefighters on the entire south side of Sheboygan. Fact. Mead Street Station, second busiest station in the city of Sheboygan. The Chief's got those numbers. Somebody was asking about it earlier, about the call volume in each of those stations. That station's the second busiest, 60%, um, I forget what the numbers, but it's the second busiest station. Fact, 13 to 15 firefighters are retiring in the next four years, four to five years. Okay. This conversation is going to come up again, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to come up again, okay? What's not fair, talking about fairness, what's not fair is that an entire south side of the city, and I live about as far south as you can get in the city of Sheboygan. The south side of the city has four firefighters protecting it where the north side has 16, 17, I don't even know the number. It's just not proportionate. What's not fair is to the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan on the south side that aren't getting the protection they deserve. I understand the budgetary constraints. I play with numbers every single day for a living. But the fact is that there are people that need the protection that may or may not get it because one fire station is protecting that entire south side. <clears throat> this is not the most attractive solution, I fully admit that. Okay. This is a short-term solution to what is a long-term problem. And yes, we didn't create this whole mess. Okay. But this is the hand we've been dealt. We're going to come back to the table by December 31st and put together a long-range solution for what, this, what fire protection should look like in the city of Sheboygan. The, the people of the south side deserve to have fire protection. Okay, so I'm voting yes. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Bowers. Well, there's been uh, much discussion tonight, and of course, uh, both sides have uh, expressed it. 
what we're faced with is uh, draconian results if we don't take action tonight because come January 1st, next year, the budget, I think the budget has to be on November 30th. Is that what it is? Okay. Between now and then, there's going to be a lot of information passed back and forth. We certainly would like to see something in writing from the fire department. And two weeks ago, or a week ago, the committee of the whole, I thought we were going to have something. What we have to do now is take the bull by the horns. We're faced a decision today. There's a long-term decision. So we either have to vote for it or against it. Let's be leaders. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Uh, next, we have Alderman Boren for the second time. Third time. Uh, I never, no, I the never first time he, he was asking questions of the chief. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor, and thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Uh, uh, if, I re, uh, if I remember correctly, back in December when Chief Lestusky was still here, he invited all the older persons up for a meeting uh, to discuss what his projections were if he had to close a fire station. And I know Alderman Heidemann and I from the 4th District attended together. <clears throat> and it was Chief Lestusky's uh, opinion about two weeks before he retired that if he had to close a fire station, he would recommend closing the downtown station. Then what he did is he made the case for that decision and what he did is he showed Alderman Heidemann and I, and I think probably the other Alderman that took the time to go up and visit with him and I appreciated the invitation. He showed us the downtown station and he showed us the, he showed us the three th surrounding stations, the one over on, uh, the one on the south side, the 25th State Street Station, and the one up on the north side. And at least to me, and I think, I can't speak for Alderman Heidemann, but I, I believe at the time, we thought that was the most logical station to change based on response times. Granted, it's the oldest part of the city, and there may be more incidents, but from a coverage standpoint, if you had to close a station, it, it seemed to make sense to me, and he made a pretty good case for that. <coughs> then all of a sudden, it's Alderman Heidemann and I, and uh, Rindfleisch and Hammond, that's the station that ends up being closed, and then the rolling blackouts. <clears throat> and uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciated the meeting with Chief Lestusky, and what he said made a lot of sense as far as response times. These response times now, I agree with Alderman Hammond on the south side, are really crappy. Uh, it makes a lot more sense to me, following up on what Chief Lestusky said, to close this downtown station and mothball it and uh, keep the two stations open on the south side and the two on the north side, and I think problem solved. But it was very logical when I looked at those maps, and he, he uh, imposed that over the downtown area for those three stations converging down here, even though it was the oldest part of the city, it made a lot of sense. What changed in two weeks after you became chief to change what he was recommending? Thank you. Uh, when you factor in the number of calls and the increased response times, this area showed the greatest risk when closing a station. With that information in hand, um, I analyzed them all and decided that we need time to look at this. We need to brown out the stations and analyze what all the consequences are to those three stations and then make a decision after a year. And that's why the decision was made to go to the brownouts. Thank you, Chief. Uh, second time, Alderman Versi. Thank you. It's actually kind of two part here for you. Um, the first part is is we're trying to hire to four, which um, now with that we want four to an engine for your NFPA standards is what we're trying to get to, or what you're trying to get to is that's those, not correct. We you don't want four to an engine. We are not increasing the number of people on engines at all. Okay. If we did, would, wouldn't that just spell out the numbers? Because on your contract right now, you're able to have four off per shift, correct? Yes. Okay. So you'd actually have to have for 24 on duty. That's actually 72 firefighters alone. And then you got to add the three shift commanders, two deputy chiefs, you know, you, and then the fire inspectors. So it's actually a total of 79. So not counting any secretaries, that's what the number would actually end up being. Because if we hire four now, if you have any kind of retirees coming up, the seven retirees coming up, you would be needing more firefighters again, correct? We're at 69 right now. If we hire four, that gets to 73. Yes, but trying to get to the four, an engine. Not trying to get to four on an engine. 
Okay. No one, no one has uh, approached that subject. Okay. A, a number of years ago when we changed the way that we operate, um, we went from having three and four on an engine to now we have two <coughs> on an engine, but two of those same people are on the ambulance. Sure. Okay, which would bring me to the, my second part. Would I, I'd actually like to add an amendment. Uh, lift the hiring freeze. Um, I would be supporting lifting the hiring freeze, but you'd also have to, if you would be able to get out of ambulance business, use those same firefighters, keep all five fire stations open. You wouldn't have to touch anything else, wouldn't have to do any more brownouts, all five fire stations with the four new hires and potential retirees coming soon would we be able to man that a lot better than keeping ambulance service, five stations, and asking for more. Thank you, uh, Alderman Versi. Make that an amendment? Um, that is an amendment to uh, lift hire the hiring for, freeze. Yep. Lift the hiring freeze and uh, eliminate the ambulance service. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, this discussion now shifts to the amendment only. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers on the amendment only. I, no. I guess I'm a little confused. What's the difference between what, what Alderman Bercy said and what I... Uh, uh, what you said is, is don't lift the hiring freeze, which was the gist of this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, he is, is, he is working <laughs> with, the, with the resolution to lift the hiring freeze. Right. Okay, which is the gist of the resolution. Right. Um, but he is saying on top of that he would like to be out of the ambulance business. So everything is the same except with me, my resolution. With you, you wanted to not lift the hiring freeze, which if this resolution right. reads, to lift the hiring freeze in order to hire four firefighter paramedics. Uh, all right, so that was out of order, my, my resolution. Uh, you were, you were uh, changing the meaning of the resolution. This is an amendment to the resolution. The resolution reads oh, to- it was, it was changing the meaning where uh, I was out of order. Uh, you did not have a second to your amendment. It was withdrawn, and therefore your amendment failed due to the lack of a second. All right. Thank you. Um, we have President Gisha. Uh, this sure. is on the amendment only? Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, Chief? Question time. Based on the fact the ambulance service brings in revenue in excess of expense of about $800,000, which funds four firemen, which then leaves about 200 and some odd thousand dollars, which would come out of your hide, by the way, of your department, for the full 800,000, is there any way possible to do what Alderman Versi has, has recommended on the amendment? based on the manpower suggested and the amount of people you'll lose because of it. Not under my financial scenario to pay for this, absolutely not. Um, you're a couple hundred thousand dollars short of that proposal. Thank you. President Gisha, um, on the amendment, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it, the amendment does not change the, uh, the resolution because uh, we have to look at the now, therefore, be it resolved. However, there are budget consequences. I think in order for that to happen, we would need to have a FIFE form because we need to know <coughs> the revenues that are, would not be billed or collected go to the general fund. That's something that's a, a budgetary <coughs> item now, if I'm correct. So we would need to, before we get past this, have a FIFE form to show what those consequences are. I think it can be pretty much determined what the consequences are that uh, anything that the ambulance brings in as revenue now when you get rid of the ambulance, uh, the way I look at it is it takes, uh, there's basically four firefighters in a unit. Um, that unit has two firefighters on a truck and two firefighters on an ambulance. That's four firefighters in a unit. Uh, if you take the overhead cost of the ambulance, service, we're not talking garages because we have those where we have fire stations for, for firefighting apparatus. Uh, we're talking the, the cost of the ambulance, the cost of supplies, the cost of fuel and maintenance on those ambulances. Uh, if you take that out of the mix, if you get rid of the ambulance service, you still need those four firefighters on a firefighting rig. Um, so all you're taking out is the, the lease on the ambulances, the fuel, the supplies, um, and uh, basically anything after that. If you're going in this scenario with hiring four firefighters, everything after that, 
um, when you deduct those expenses, uh, would be known as revenue that disappears because you're still going to have to pay the firefighters to be there. So um, if you add it all up, um, that's simple man's math, and I used to copy off of Susie Litko starting in the third grade in St. Stanislaus School in Chicago, so that's pretty much what I use. Um, that's basically the gist of it, the way I see it if you eliminate the ambulance service. So, I mean, and that's, that's, that's kind of dumbing it down, um, but it's the easiest way to understand it in my, my opinion. Your Honor, if I could put it in simple numbers, uh, the revenue projected is around 900000 this year. The marginal cost other than employees is roughly 220 for the lease fuel additional overtime. So you're short 600000 600 to 700,000. So that's uh, that would be called uh, more deficit, uh, at, in my opinion. At this point, if we're going to lift the hiring freeze and get out of the ambulance service, I President Kisha, if I can just follow up, uh, I think one of the questions or the cons why things like this come up is I think people think you have people sitting around that are just ambulance drivers. They're called firemen paramedics. Maybe you could describe what they do on a daily basis when the fire bell rings. Uh, you're correct, and I think that's one of the... They're the same people. They're the same people. The people that, the two paramedics that are on the ambulance on the 18th Street Station and the two paramedics that are on the ambulance on the North 15th and North Avenue Station, those are the, the hose men on that engine that's also in that station. <coughs> that engine goes out with two people. Um, the fire that we had the other night on South 10th Street, it was the ladder truck with two people and Med 2 from that station with two people. Those paramedics were the, the, the two firefighters on the hose, and the same with the apartment fire on Calumet Drive. The uh, firefighter paramedics <coughs> that attacked that fire and put it out were on Med 4. So you're right, they do a multiple of jobs. They, uh, the paramedics, when they're not answering a medical call, they're doing the same things that the firefighters do. They are the educators in the schools. They are our fire investigators. Um, they are cutting the grass at the fire stations. And uh, they're doing everything else that firefighters do. Thank you, Chief. Um, we are still speaking of the amendment, the amendment being uh, to, to lift the hiring freeze and get out of the ambulance business. Questions or comments on the amendment only? Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Wouldn't by eliminating the again uh, the the ambulance service, they they would we'd lose the requirement for our firefighters to be paramedics. They would they go back right back to fire. You know, one of the reasons you know, I voted to lift, uh, lift the hiring freeze the first time. I voted in, in favor of the ambulance service because I thought we were going to get better firemen. Okay, and, and I guess I'm I'm support, I'll, I'll support the ambulance service. I'm not so crazy about expanding the service. But again, I thought it was a good idea to get into that business. That's it. But I don't want to go backwards with our qualified individuals to go back to just firefighters because these are highly trained people that we, you know, that work for our city. Thank you. And again, we're not looking to expand the service. We're just looking to keep it going at the same level uh, that it was going. And I think it's important to note that in the last two and a half years, our fire protection has not suffered because of taking on this additional service to the citizens. In fact, I think it's improved in the way that we operate. But our fire protection has not suffered because of this. Thank you, Chief. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that uh, basically all candidates coming out mm -hmm. of, uh, out of uh, school now are certified firefighter paramedics, correct? It would be very hard to hire just a simple firefighter. They don't train people at that level anymore. It, it's a fire medic program. And I, I believe I did send that information around to all the aldermen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. Uh, on the amendment only, again, under discussion. The amendment is to uh, uh, keep all five stations open and get out of the ambulance business. On the amendment, Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I previously said, I don't care who has the ambulance service. Uh, as long as we can able to provide protection for health and property protection uh, at a reasonable cost to the taxpayers uh, with reasonable response times. Um, uh, Carter Paulus once said as he spoke here that it's a moral issue, that uh, we should be out of the ambulance service because we should not do anything that um, private enterprise can do, because private enterprise can do it. <coughs> um, 
Well, that's fantastic. Um, I appreciate that. I'm all for probably enterprise and capitalism. It's just the way that my country operates, always has been, and always will be. Uh, and I'm proud of that. Um, but now here, we have some very real math. Um, private enterprise can go ahead and have it, but there's really two things. One, we found out that we're gonna have a 700,000 approximately shortfall for this year, if we get rid of it immediately, um, or next year, depending on how we change that. I mean, there's revenues being generated that go to the city right now. Uh, and two, based on the discussion we had in Committee of the Whole, that <clears throat> no business is gonna get into it for free. We're gonna have to subsidize an ambulance service. We're gonna have to pay them to do the service. So on one hand, we're still gonna have to pay the firefighters to be in existence, and on the other hand, we're gonna have to pay, we're gonna have to subsidize private industry, which doesn't sound like a very private industry to me, um, to take on our, our service. So add that subsidy on top of our budget shortfall now, and you get a very real picture of what's going on. This isn't fuzzy math. Um, I'm also gonna rely on Susie from Chicago because I don't have the numbers in front of me. Susie Litko. Susie Litko, thank you, Susie. But the reality is, is there's revenue that, that we have not had to raise taxes because of that revenue provided by the ambulance service. Without that revenue, we're gonna have to replace it by either raising taxes or cutting additionally. And those cuts are gonna be on top of what we're gonna ask departments to do next year if we do this. And two, we're gonna have to subsidize some kind of uh, private industry uh, so that they can make profits for the shareholders, they can make profits for the owners on the back of our taxpayers. Um, uh, and yes, I do use the word profits even though the nonprofit uh, companies are the ones that uh, uh, currently are operating uh, a system in Sheboygan County uh, that previously operated the system. Um, but to me, subsidizing them on the backs of taxpayers makes absolutely no sense when I still have to pay for the firefighters to be here and pay for firefighters who are willing to sit down with us, as the chief had said, and look at the future and look at making long-term changes to this. If we, if we pass this amendment right, this, right now, we're not gonna have a partners with the fire department. We are gonna have to sit down in a very uh, nasty negotiation and try to get some of the things and we've given them absolutely no incentive to do so, to give us anything. Because we've already taken duties away and we're, and we're already showing that we're willing to forego our public protection and safety um, to do it. So what incentive would they have to partner with us to fix the problem in the long term? So I ask the committee to, the council to vote no on this amendment. Okay, on the amendment only, and thank you, Alderman Rinflesh, Alderman Hanna. I'd like to call the question on the amendment. Second. Calling the question, second, and calling the question on the amendment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. <clears throat> Alderman Boren is opposed to calling the question on the amendment. Uh, motion carries. Uh, we will do a roll call vote on the amendment, please. Uh, and an I vote would amend the resolution to read uh, that we will lift the hiring freeze and uh, exit the ambulance business. Roll call. Versi? Aye. Warren? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Forgot you. Bauk? No. Bowers? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kath? No. Hillson? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Rindfleisch? No. Vanderweel? No. Twelve no's, four yeses. A motion to amend fails. Okay, we are back under discussion on passing or not passing the original, original resolution uh, for the second time, President Gisha. Yes, Your Honor, this is my second time, uh, and I'll be brief. All I'm asking for is I thought we were making some good progress at the end of the committee, the whole meeting, so maybe I could ask, I guess this involves both you and Alderman Hanna, a recap of the short-term and long-term plan and community visits for us to move toward a long-term plan. Could I bother the two of you to recap the ending of the well, Roll the tape back. If I recall, Alderman Hanna took something I had just mentioned to him and said, by the way. If would, you, would you like to expound on that, or can I tell the people the story again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just looking for a recap to what you. we Given me the opportunity to share a secret, I'll do that. Uh, we're very much looking at every alternative. Uh, and whether that be alternatives like uh, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, where they have uh, full-time firefighters subsidized by paid-on-call firefighters. We don't know whether that's gonna work for our city, whether it works for a city that has a configuration of population the way ours does, but everything's on the table. And, and really just summarize it, 
from everything I've heard from the union leadership of the fire department, uh, they're willing to talk about everything. Uh, they've been quite candid uh, that they're not taking anything off their plate. That's not saying they're going to agree to everything, but we've, we've got a group that led the way last year, uh, is stepped forward with some givebacks this year uh, and, and, and next year, and the mayor's going to explore some opportunities and bring those back to us. And I spilled the beans. And okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, thank you, Alderman Hanna. <laughs> No, if, if I can, I am leaving uh, Wednesday at noontime. I will be driving to Minnesota, visiting two cities in Minnesota, um, one uh, Thursday morning, one Thursday afternoon, uh, and then Friday morning on the way back, I'm visiting the city in Wisconsin with similar demographics uh, to Sheboygan. Uh, two Minnesota cities are suburbs of Minneapolis, uh, which have uh, about the same populations, but uh, they do rely on the major metro area for fire support, obviously. Um, the city in, in Wisconsin is more of a more of an island similar to Sheboygan where they, they are the biggest fish in the pond, so to speak. Um, these cities do have a combination of uh, full-time and paid on-call firefighters. Uh, truthfully, that's what I would hope we can get to in the future. Um, this will take time. It's not going to be something that, that, that takes a year or two years. Um, it's a transitional period. Uh, which I've decided to go there myself to get the facts uh, rather than having somebody else go and get me the facts as they want me to know them. Uh, I thought uh, it would be uh, a, uh, the best way to do it. At least I know what I'm hearing are facts. I, I'm be I will be meeting with mayors, uh, city administrators, managers, uh, fire chiefs uh, who are more than willing to give us their, their history, uh, their 10-year financials, and exactly how they do things. Um, my goal would be to transition over time through attrition from where we are today to something closer to that model. Um, paid on call does not mean volunteer um, because they are better trained um, and a uh, 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 bit better paid than straight volunteers. However, you do not have to pay them as full-time employees. Uh, the way I see this is, you know, and I have not sat down, I've mentioned it to the chief briefly, um, I want to get the facts before we come up with a plan. And we also need a plan that is agreeable, um, obviously, to the Common Council, but also agreeable to our citizens and to our fire department, a plan that we can transition into. And hopefully, we can come up with a plan uh, that can be done over time, not that we get people that go, go, go get overzealous and say, oh, that's a great plan, let's enact it tomorrow. Um, that's why, if this passes this evening, um, with some concessions from the fire department to carry us through 11, the way I see it is that gives us 18 months to come up with a genuine, because we will be, um, hopefully before then, but a maximum of 18 months uh, to come up with a genuine long-term plan that can be done through attrition <coughs> and not through layoffs. Um, it would be great in order to transition into this and see the guy, the young guy that's on the bubble right now at the fire department 15 years from now, or actually it would be the fourth guy hired, I guess, under the lifting the hiring freeze. It would be great to see him be the junior man in the fire department 15 years from now. If that would happen, we would have succeeded. Um, because right now we have a, a plan, if we can get some minor concessions, um, that we, we are not opening up the gap of the, of the deficit. Uh, it's straightening out to a straight line. And the idea would be to have those lines cross where we actually recognize savings. Um, but we can't get there by rhetoric. We can't get there by uh, waving the flag. Um, it's going to take a lot of cooperation. Uh, it's going to take uh, um, a, a heck of a lot of cooperation on both sides. On both sides. Um, the reason I'm saying this tonight is because I have said that by December 31st I will have a plan, uh, I guarantee you it'll be long before then. But I'm still keeping that December 31st date out there. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, like us to move forward on this uh, um, as, a, uh, as a common council. Uh, you folks have been you know, kicking this ball around a long time. It's getting pretty worn out. Uh, I'd like to see a decision made tonight. Um, and I guarantee you that I will put everything that I have 
uh, into solving this problem and coming up with something that is a long-term economic solution for the citizens of the city and that will provide uh, the services they are now accustomed to. So that is uh, my plan. Um, any further discussion on this issue? We have uh, Alderman Hanna, would you like to? I would just like to call the question so we can second. go to 556. We have a motion and a second on calling the question, uh, the question being the resolution. Um, do we have a? Uh, Wait a second. We have a motion and a second on calling the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a vote on <coughs> resolution number five dash, or item number five fat dash 56, resolution 271011. Roll call, please. Wangaman? No. Warren? No. Falk? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Ham? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? No. Kath? No. Hiddleston? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Randerweel? Aye. Bercy? No. Eight. Eight to eight. Uh, it's a tie vote, uh, as I've stated before. Uh, the chair, uh, for all reasons I've stated, votes aye. Motion carries. Moving on. <coughs> Five dash sixty, resolution number twenty-eight dash ten dash eleven by Alder Persons Gisha Boren Radke Hammond and Bulk establishing the community budget goals and objectives and specific guidelines for the 2011 City of Sheboygan budget. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is kind of anticlimactic after the last one, but it's, it's pretty important. Uh, we've again put together a, a uh, budget resolution that contains goals and objectives, which last year I was very heartened to see that all but one of those goals and objectives were met. And then we put together the second part of it as specific guidelines. So we wanted to give some uh, will of the council regarding uh, goals and objectives and an overall theme, and then specific budget guidelines. I'll just point out the specific guidelines. That the city of Sheboygan budget be produced via zero-based budgeting. A lot of people don't know what that is. It is basically starting with zero and building your departments. That's it in the in the purest sense. It makes you examine every single little thing you do rather than starting with your, your clay that's already been set as the year before. This makes you create it from the bottom up. Uh, the capital improvement program to begin to again be at the $2 million level as we did last year to again put back into our capital improvements into our community and that would be for bonding purposes. <coughs> and maybe the one that always everybody wants to know about, what, what do you suggest we do on taxes? Well, this specific document calls for a zero levy increase for 2011. Levy is the most important thing. Rate means nothing. It's what you spend year over year. And in this case, this budget resolution is calling for the city of Sheboygan not spending a nickel more than it spent in 2011. Not a nickel. Living with our means, like families have to do all across the city right now. That will put downward pressure on our employees, pay and benefit structure. It should send a signal, as Alderman uh, Bauk has talked about in the past, as the previous budget resolution that I authored last year with the help of the Finance Committee, uh, moving us down to now sub 80% of pay and benefits as part of our budget. This resolution, based on the, the flatness of the spending, will, will force that to happen even further. And uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Alderman Gish, I have a question. Would it be appropriate to add another goal tonight, or is that? Sure, you can. Okay, I would, I would make a motion that <laughs> by it, November 1st, a plan be presented <laughs> to the Common Council uh, on the future of the fire department and the ambulance service uh, for the citizens of Sheboygan. Second. You just uh, gave me two months off of my get going commitment. <laughs> I would agree with that myself. It just, you're on. Just so everybody understands, I don't think this is a, a significant change. 
but the rest of the resolution kind of talks about the 2011 budget. I don't think that really messes it up putting that in there at all. So I would, uh, I would uh, welcome that, that I will second it. We have a motion and a second and an amendment to put in there that the long-term fire department plan be presented to the council by November One, 1st, right. 2010. Under discussion. Alder Person Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As wonderful as that sounds, that does stop us from having 60 days of planning, and I think we need all of the time we can get. If we could bring it forth November 1st, if it's ready, yes. But to force us to bring it forward with 60 days less of planning, I won't vote yes on that. If I could clarify. President Kisha. If I'm not mistaken, Alderman Bourne, you suggested it oh, under goals and objectives. Right. So it is not a. So it would be, it would be a goal. And I would agree if it was in the second half of the document, but I believe this gives us enough wiggle room uh, as a goal. As I said last year, very heartened that those, those goals and objectives, which didn't have to be acted upon, were virtually all acted upon. Thank you, President Kisha and Alder Person Montemayor. One more time. Thank you again. And we did have goals and objectives last year that we were hoping to be nudged forward. Well, they were a lot more than nudged forward. And if I thought these goals and objectives were going to be nudged forward, I would agree with that. But I think they, again, will be slammed forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Montemayor. And I might add that I hope they are. <laughs> and thank you, President Gisha. And Alderman Radke, would you like to speak on this issue? Yeah, I'd just like to propose an amendment to number five on the second page. Um, replacing. Um, we, we need to act on the First Amendment first. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're still oh, under sorry. discussion on, on the First Amendment. Which one are you? Anybody, would like to, and anybody that would like to speak on the First Amendment? If there is none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. One alderman, alder person Montemayor opposed. Motion carries on the amendment. Uh, alderman Radke. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would just like to offer an amendment to, under number five, replace the words fraud hotline with uh, community eyes and ears hotline. Uh, the word fraud is a very negative connotation. And I'd also like to thank Alderman Gisha for the suggestion. Community eyes and ears hotline. C, C program. Community Eyes and Ears, C. Oh, okay. That's another acronym. Acronym.com. Acronym.com. <laughs> there you go. Uh, number five, second page, uh, that serious consideration be given to establishing a fraud hotline. Fraud will be uh, replaced by the words community. community, eyes, and ears, also known as C hotline, the C hotline. Did we have a second on that amendment? Second. We have a second. We have a second on a, do we need a fife on that C? No, but maybe no. a third. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a new acronym, that uh, a friendly <laughs> amendment for another acronym. Um, under discussion on the new acronym. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, we have another acronym. Okay, now getting back to the uh, uh, amended resolution. Your Honor, I move that the resolution, the amendment as, the resolution as amended be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution as amended upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Warren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Bradkey. Aye. Vinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bercy. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 5-75, uh, General Ordinance Number 3-10-11 by older persons Hannah, Gisha, and Vanderweel amending sections of the code so as to change the class grade for the plumbing slash environmental inspector in the city development department table of organization. Alder person Hannah. I would move that the <clears throat> general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. 
We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Path. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bercy. Aye. Longamon. Aye. 16 on. I didn't, vote, I didn't vote on that. I. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> second Always I did that to you. It's the thunder. I apologize. <coughs> <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, other matters authorized by law 6 69 will be uh, referred to public protection and safety. 6 70 also to public protection and safety. And 6 71 to public protection and safety. You all have those documents. Other matters authorized by the law, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 6-72 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Richard Coomer and Laura Lawrence of Route 43 Harley-Davidson making various requests from the City to hold the Aurora and Sheboygan Shores Motorcycle Rally. That will be referred to Finance and Public Works. 6-73 is a communication from Alderperson Bowers on behalf of the South Pier Market Association requesting permission to establish a once or twice a week outdoor market to be held on South Pier. That will go to the RDA. 674 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a notice of sheriff's sale in the foreclosure matter of U.S. Bank National Association versus John F. Eisner et al. We'll go to risk management. 675 is an RO by the purchasing agent submitting a report related to the provision and installation of an energy-saving building control system for the Municipal Service Building, utilizing direct digital control technology in accordance with City of Sheboygan request for proposal number 1873-10. Will be referred to Public Works. 6-73 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the installation of an energy-efficient digital building control system for the Municipal Service Building. Uh, 676, I believe that was, will go to Public Works. 677 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from Susie Patterson of Al and Al's Steinhaus and the Tavern, making various requests of the City for their 2010 celebration of German Heritage, Oktoberfest 2010. Will be referred to Public Works. 678 is communication from Marilyn Cooley requesting that the truck route be changed in the area of the Regency House as there is a noise issue. This area used to be an industrial area but is now residential. We'll go to PPNS. Yeah. 679 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011. Law and licensing. 6 80 is a communication from Patrick Drynan, Executive Director of Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, wanting to initiate the process for a project plan amendment and border amendment for tax increment district number six to improve the economic well-being and long-term prosperity of Sheboygan County. Will be referred to city planning. Do we have a motion to adjourn? We do. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, aye, motion aye. carries, thank you.